They're on. All right. This is the... Uh, what date? Look at it. 20th. July 20th. Um, planning and Zoning Commission work session. And our goal is to finalize our review and update of the municipal land use plan and start the, re the review of the land use table and definitions um, in conjunction with uses of light and heavy manufacturing. Well, that's included in that whole thing. Municipal lands. Inventory. Well, it's, the, it's called the plan, I think. If we look at right. the doc. We know what we're looking at. Yeah. Uh, it's called the Municipal Land Inventory and Management Plan. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> okay, land plan. this one. All right. So, um, I started, at, we, were, we were, just to bring the public up to speed, we have uh, had several work sessions on this, seven? seven? Seven work sessions on this. This is our eighth. And we were... Um, what we do is we review it, make recommendations to city council, and from us it goes to city council for their review, revisions, and um, adoption. It's by resolution. It is not part of the code. It's a plan. So uh, what we were ready to do is we'd made all our changes, but um, we had a member of the public. Uh, Carol Griswold, who had uh, 60 pages of an email that came to us the day we were to finalize the uh, review and recommendation and pass a resolution to adopt this. And so what my hope is tonight is that Carol has the most recent revision copy of this and can just... Uh, the housekeeping things where it's spelling or changing of a uh, verb, we don't need to talk about. The Community Development Department will take care of housekeeping changes just because you were so thorough. The meat of it is what we'll go through. And I think looking at your 60-page document, a lot of it, I think, I don't know what copy you were working from that you had received when you asked for it. And so I think some of it we had already gone that way. So hopefully you have a copy now that has everything we had in the last packet, and you don't. I, I have to work off, since I don't have access to a laptop or my desktop computer, um, I have to work off the original document that I submitted to you with my red changes. Yeah, that was hard. And I'm trying to, I've got well, that's what I'm missing. copies, <laughs> and they're all a different page numbers. But I think once we get started on, here we are, you know, both through. I think it'll We're going to go through page by page. Yes, please. I think we can Again. find um, where we are. Okay. My goal is to really get to the land use allowed table tonight. So this is going to go quickly. Okay? But it is, I'd like to mention that this may be the eighth meeting that has been advertised as a municipal land use plan revision, but you never got to it. You were working so hard on that other first part. I don't believe that this represents the eighth time. But we, nevertheless, right. you've been let's go on. Go, yeah, let's go we're, on. I'm not going to argue with that. So on. we're. Um, I'm looking at the table of contents, and we are making a change to the Boys and Girls Club because that's what it is now. Okay. Um, could, could I suggest, first of all, that the formatting of this plan needs to have a whole lot more, as I mentioned, than underlines and asterisks and, and stuff. And I was referring to the Seward, Seward Airport Improvement Plan, and I started to reformat this and I could present it to administration, but it's so much more helpful to have section, you know, identified, section, for example, 3, and then underneath that is 3.1 and then 3.11. So this, you can easily find and reference these really important concepts. Okay, uh, Carol, I That's think... That's formatting, because right now we have introduction underlined, there's, there's no formatting to it. So uh, it makes it really hard to reference. There's uh, major titles, and if you follow the table of contents, you can find them. And I think that this format has probably been the way it is since when you were on planning and zoning. And, and so I think that that's something 
I'm not ready to discuss reformatting this at this time, um, Ms. Wild. And if I can just point out that the, what planning and zoning is doing is updating the uses under the land management, not yeah. the, the layout of the plan in general. That's, no. It's a chance that's, to make it useful. But anyway, um, yeah, so, on page three, which I believe is the copy that you have under acquisition, it would be helpful to move the recommendations from page 58 to 59 to this section and delete the first sentence. I'm under acquisitions. Yes. We're not looking at the same thing. Back in the front and in so in the introduction. Yes. Yeah. No. Yeah, I see it. It's on page two in my pack. If you're looking at the packet from July 6th, the um, this one, July 6th, the word acquisition is on page two, the bottom of page. So oh, you don't no, have I, it. Uh, I totally it's 58. I'm yeah. At this one. What's the date? Yeah. Yep, that's what we're on. We're on July 6th, but so it my, my. Here it says page 24. 24. I'm looking at the one. But I think once we get to the real But Carol, yeah. I'm going to run the meeting, okay? Sure. But okay, so yeah, just slow just down a bit. Maybe that was because of the recent yeah. one that was sent out. So and we have it up there, there for. It's page three because there was a cover page, so she's going to be one page off on everything. Okay, we'll okay. find it. We'll be close enough. Okay. So, you're are you making a recommendation for me uh, for what we should be doing with municipal lands, or are you reformatting again? I am. It, it would make more sense to put the recommendations for surplus lands and the other ones that are on page fifty-eight, fifty-nine. Acquisition. Well, this this is just this is acquisition, and and there's several titles that come underneath of it. We're not listing pieces of property under the introduction, general provisions of this document. Okay. Maybe when you get there, you'll see. Okay. Let's just keep going. Yep. Could I uh, go to recommendation? The next one. The next page. Recommendation. Yeah, yeah, it's just backwards for us. Yeah, I know, I'm sorry. So, where, where it says budget time and attention applying for the remaining municipal entitlement, possible state lands to watch are, can you find that? Yeah, we're there. Okay. So, this is outdated. So, pop, pop, what I recommend is possible state. And delete lands to watch our state storage and then tell the blah 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 blah. Move shop it up, blah 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 blah. So it says possible state land to watch is 408 B Street now that the state DOT shop has moved to mile 22. And add the date that happened. Why do we need the date that that happened? Um, I find throughout this document that these historical notes and dates are really valuable references. So you can, it, it, it but is the dates, so um, was that last year that they moved? I don't know, but Carol, the dates, we're not going to keep a, a, a running log of the dates every time a lease or uh, changes and gets renewed and has extensions. That's that's well, not. We do, we do later in the thing. We do, but not, not every time. I know, but it's, Every, not every time. Date, so isn't isn't the state storage yard at the corner of Fifth and B? Why don't you include extra street addresses instead of these complicated? Sounds know, good. The Is there a problem with adding that? No. Are we adding on this one? Or? Um, up in on page three, she wants recommendations. recommendations. Right. Uh, just can change. we just put the can we just put the address in? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Let's do it. Yep. So right here. <coughs> nope, up. Up under recommendation, right there, uh, budget time and attention to applying Keep the going. remainder of the states. It's at the very top. Page four. Yeah, right, right there. there. Right here. Possible so state lands. Where it says fifth and B, put 408 B Street. Yep. So just uh, at 408 B Street? Correct. Yep, that's fine. Okay, next. Okay. Um, Courtney, will you make 
your changes in red though, so sorry. <laughs> this says once the state shop has moved out, isn't it already moved out? Yeah, so it should say. So remove it. Yeah, once. Yeah. I'd say remove all of them. Yeah. Yeah, remove that uh, phrase once the state shop moves out to mile 22. Uh, to mile 22. The possible state land to watch is 408 East Street now that the state DOT shop has moved to mile 22. Very simple. I like it. Simple. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Then we will skip these questions. Um, um, where it refers to, let's see, this would be the next page. Um, where it refers to the City Council Resolution 94-101. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to know if you could include that resolution in the appendix. I don't think so. You know, you can look up a resolution pretty easy. Yeah. And we'd start really filling things up. So I, I would skip that whole part about okay. referencing. Some of these older ones are not. Very it's, you know, but, but there's some staff and people will okay. follow through. You can do a Alrighty. public records request. So what page is that for you so I can? Five. Page five? Okay, good. Yes. Well, yeah, four or five. <laughs> four or five. One of those. I have it on five. <laughs> So at the bottom of page five, it says, on the other hand, the city is trying to encourage development at the Seward Marine Industrial Center. Is this, is this still true? Yes. Yeah. So is that why we have lower rates and stuff? I thought we were kind of, you know, hooked up. No, we actually had a long discussion about rates. Yeah. Okay. We're good. And okay. we just recommended that rates be looked at, but that's not our bailiwick. Yeah. Very good. Okay. So that? on the next page. Um, at the bottom it says extend Benson Drive through Sweatman, mm -hmm. and then it has to note that two private parcels stand. And then I wanted to know, consider extending ben Benson Drive through the north portion of the former Jesse Lee home parcel at 101 Benson and 1824 Phoenix Road. We, we can't do that. We've had lots of a discussion on that. And Right. And, it's and not. It's not that, that, but that has been discussed yeah. and it's been rejected. Well, I know it, you can't go straight. You can't do a jog. No, no. And, just, and now there is another way out. Right. Okay. okay. So um, the next one, next page, easements. Yep. What happens after 20 years? That's a good question. And I didn't know easements had a 20-year life. The just went I do. Of course, this is the city authorizing and <coughs> yeah, granting an easement. It's not. Years, it's not, not us giving the city a lifetime easement. It's no. the city giving somebody else an easement. But at 20 years, it needs to be relooked re at. It needs to be relooked at. Or yes. it can be relooked at. After or 20 years, it. somebody brings it up because we're a. Somebody has to bring up a. I'm not happy. Yeah. Otherwise, we ignore it. Uh, or we vacate the easement. And that goes through the process well, of planning. And that so then makes right. somebody unhappy and they... But it says in there not to exceed 20 years, right. which means anybody knowing, you know, if they read that, they go, oh, my easement could go out after 20 years. Mm -hmm. But so you want something in there I that says that it can be... Renewed? Or renewed. City code Some authorizes state. the city to grant easements not to exceed 20 years. So that that has nothing change. to do with what you do with the easement. It's just saying it has... It has the ability to grant up to 20 years, but not beyond it. So what happens after 20 years? You have to resubmit. Well, that would well, be, go, that'd that'd be in another area. Hmm? If it's stated in the city code, then we have to do a code change when it required easements. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, where, where what happens? In the code. In the code. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, the Seward City Code authorizes so the city to grant. That's it. You know, there's no recourse after Well, if well, someone even, reads this, they can call the community development yeah. department or the city manager or assistant city manager and ask, how, how do I get it to go longer? And yeah. then they'll find out. Well, at that time, they ask for another easement. Yeah. If I'd like to, if I want the city to grant me an easement after 20 years, I have to sit, I have to ask the city to grant me another easement. To, to me, to relook at it and see if yeah. we need to, yeah. you know, under new circumstances, look at it that it's appropriate. But, but I think what it's there to let people know is that the city doesn't get to grant easements for a lifetime. Yeah, and it's the 
specifically in Title VII. So yeah. that one of the things yeah. we need to remember when we change things in here that are referenced <clears throat> by city code, then we, we can't just change them. We have to go right, through the process next. of changing that okay. portion of the code, too. All so right. Next. Okay, next. Um, continue to keep, I'd say, maintain an accurate where, where, it's oh, under you mean the recommendation? So, just change, just wording. Keep wording. Yeah. Sure. Um, so, access. Is that okay? Yeah, it's just, yeah, um, it's, it's, right. just it's okay. Yeah, no, well, it's just a, that's, yeah, it's okay. I got it. So, I, next I, it's right it's more housekeeping. Access. Yes. The, this, the third line, the city has also retained numerous access easements on the Strike prison site and say Spring Creek Correctional Facility site. And then at the end of that sentence, and a Fognac Beach is accessed from National Right of Way. Spring Creek Beach is accessed from an unnamed gravel road parallel in Spring Creek. The North Boat Basin is accessed from the public boat launch ramp. Fourth of July Beach is accessed from Jellison Avenue to Delphin Street to Sorrel Road. I think these public accesses are extremely important to clarify and maintain because we need public access to our beaches. Cindy, I would just suggest that we don't change Spring Cri Prison to Spring Creek because what if somebody else takes it over and renames it? Right, I, I have those, but everything else is fine. Everything else, I'm okay with everybody, okay yeah. with those accesses yeah, to the beaches? To them, yes. Okay. I just thought they didn't like to call prison. How about correctional facility? Won't it always be that? It will always be a correctional facility. It's longer. It's prison. It's Everybody okay. sort of knows what it is. Okay. <coughs> That's right. No, correctional <coughs> facility. That's fine. Okay. Doesn't matter, man. Get down, move on. Um, utility, my question there was how does this affect the need to keep power lines clear? Doesn't. Doesn't. Okay. And again, it, yeah. I think it's so. Where are we talking about fine. trying to put in the? Because I don't right there, right, right, here, right, here. right here. I mean, we have the legal description. Right. We right okay, here. we have ID. this. We have this. We have this. Yeah. Right. All right. As long yeah. as it's consistent, <coughs> parcel ID, you can look up and find and all the information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I I know the public has a really hard time understanding where things are without the street address. Hmm. Yeah, but we have 410 Adam Street. You I mean, we have, have. You don't have 306 Fourth Avenue. For yeah. what? The city hall is 410 Adams. Then it says. Or North parking lot, city hall storage building, West parking lot, and Erbach Memorial Pocket Park. It's right. Everything that's right here. Over there. No, I understand that. I'm just trying to think of why. Why does the public need to have the address for the pocket park? I'm just trying to think it through. Why would why would it be confusing? I'm just I'm trying to I'm trying to think through your thought process. If somebody else is looking this up, and it says the city hall. It doesn't say address. Why well, it says 410 address? Adam Street. Why don't you put address under address? Because the north parking lot is a section 20 feet 
block S. It's a section. It's block of so, 20 feet, block 10, 50, 11 to 15. Okay. Again, so, I just go right. back to... And it's really seven. easy to go find that. And uh -huh. there's no address at 3... At the, at the, there's no marker at the Memorial Park. But it has a, that, that parcel, KPD parcel, has an address. So why don't we put the address under address? But because it's be, confusing. You can't go over there and look at a number. Right. There's no, there's no number on that lot. If yeah. you're walking by my house, you see 806. You walk by the park, you don't see a number. And it's, it's really easy to look up lots 23 and 24, block 16. No, I, I, I don't see that we need to add. Well, so if it doesn't have an address, then it shouldn't have an address under address. Well, I don't want to get confusing. We're coming in here with one address. We don't need to have multiple addresses for the okay, same well, thing. Under address, it says West Parking Lot. Or no, under address, it says 410 Adam Street. And, and then it has in. all the lots that right. are included in that. that okay, we're done with yeah, that. Let's, let's move on. on. I, I don't think we're gaining anything by that. No. Right. Okay. Um, Let's move to the next page under student animal shelter. Recommendation, retain until the animal shelter is relocated to Sea Lion, sea lion Avenue and then sell. Okay, again, that's okay. just a sell. housekeeping. Yeah. Um, the next one, the city shop, update to mention the Fort Raymond location. And I'm not ready to do that. We haven't decided on yeah, that's where that's going yet. yet. No, what? There's no, there's okay. no final decision on that. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Okay, I just um, yeah. Oh, it's a work session. Yeah. yeah. No. Here, the Seward Volunteer Fire Department owns 322 Fourth Avenue, which has been replatted into one parcel. So that updates um, the description. The fire hall was built by volunteers in the early 1960s. The parking lot itself was acquired from the nonprofit volunteer fire department. And then strike, they also own three lots on the north side, so that's not true anymore. They own 322 4th Avenue, which has been replanted into one parcel. They also own a lot on the north side of the fire hall. But that's a different section. Um, yeah, so I just, just wanted to update that. They also own three lots on the north side of the fire hall. That has been replanted into one lot, and it's called 322 4th Avenue. Which three lots are those? But that's a volunteer. That's owned by the volunteer fire department. Not it's not by the by city. The city. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's not in the municipal so lands inventory. So we can put that acquired from the nonprofit. Then we can put the the volunteer fire department owns the lot north on the north side of the fire hall if we need to, or we just take it and strike that all the way out. We should probably strike it completely out because you're right. If, if it's not owned by the city, we probably really shouldn't even be referencing it. Except we want to acquire it. Then we need to put it under acquire. It's it's yeah under acquire not yeah and not in this right. section. This is kind of mixed up. So yeah, I think I think we just yeah. just strike that whole line right. if that fits. Right. Yeah. Does it's that work? Which okay, the just, parking lot to the south was acquired from the nonprofit volunteer fire no. department, and then strike. They also own the three lots on the north side of the fire hall. Correct. Strike, strike that, that whole line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That sounds good. Okay. Next. Um, hospital, Providence Medical Care Center. That runs into that same thing. Do we put hospital as a generic? It's the only one at 417 first. Well, I know, but does oh. it get reacquired at some point in time? We talked about the prison. I'm just trying to be consistent. And I'm just going to say that okay. we're already going through a rebranding. The city has had to change contracts and different things. Right. I think we should stay away from Hospital putting names in yeah. the yeah. hospital. 
Yeah, we, yeah, we've been trying to do that everywhere, taking names out. Yeah. That is, is sure. There's no reason to have that. Okay. Um, at the bottom of that, Seward Mountain Haven long-term care facility description developed in 2008 with four residential units in Central and Mid-Hilsic. What? Uh, strike site of new long-term care facility. This thing's no longer new, so just strike that. Okay, fine. Oh. Okay, and so, as they developed in two, uh, 2008 with. Um, okay, next page. So this is a real important um, point for me. Harbor Master Building, it says, uh, consider removing the Harbor Master Building for additional small shops or public plaza. So where is a better place for the Harbor Master Building than in the Harbor? Where, where well, does it say consider? They talked about the possibility of moving the Harbor Master's office to the Uplands at some point in time. And if that were to ever happen, then they would want to retain and possibly have the Harbor Master Building, current one, be able to be operated by someone by a lease. By a lease, right. So this includes leasing the present building or removing it for additional yeah, small shops. Says, yeah. It says should a new Harbor Master building be yeah. constructed. So it, yeah, it's, it's not recommending that we do it. It's just saying if it, if it happens. And, and okay. it's, it's if it happens. It's, yeah. 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 Let's just go on. It doesn't. We're, yeah. not, we're okay. spinning our wheels on that. Um, I kind of like the dates for recently graded. But you guys don't want dates. I wanted the date for the Coast Guard when that was dedicated and the fish cleaning station added. Um, reference that the Z code is under leases. Under the Z code. Because there are leased because property, leased areas on Z code. Right. So that's Z code kind of got the word in that one. Okay, the next page, the sliver parking, the sliver. Um, Council resolution approved lease and sale agreement with the Alaska Railroad on October 27, 2014. When does this lease expire? But if you don't want to deal with leases, then we'll just assume no, it's a good long time. We put, um, we have to maintain the lease agreement and we have not got a response back on when that expired. Right, it's... But before it goes to you, back to you guys on September 9th, uh -huh. we will have that answer. Good. Thank you. So I think those are really good. Yeah, we had a lot of discussion on that throughout yeah. our work sessions. Okay, so that's it for that page. The next page. Um, the middle one, this kind of got cut off, so I'm not sure what it says. Where? The middle one, whatever it says between parking lot South Harbor and the travel lift off. So. South Harbor Upland. Is that what it says, South Harbor? Okay. Yeah. Um, back when. Gosh, what's his name? I don't remember his name anymore. But the city manager at the time thought that teacher shops would be a really good idea. But since that time, parking has been extremely critical for the Gold Harbor. That uplands is jam-packed with boats, trailers, and vehicles. And I would like to rezone the north side to park the much needed boat, trailer, and vehicle parking. And I think this is the plan and the place to do that. Right now the zoning is half harbor commercial right. and half park. Right. But what was Phil Sheely? He wanted that to be T-shirt shops. Well, but you don't want any of it to be commercial? You want it all to be a park? Go and look. I, 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 I go there to do my recycling, so I have seen it. Yeah, it and it, and there's... Important. We've lost so much parking on the Northeast Harbor lot with the, with the um, Coast Guard facility. That just took out a huge chunk of parking over there. So a lot of boats are displaced. And I think the best and finest use for this 
uplands is to rezone the whole thing to park. So you, what you want on this, it says recommendations, retain land ownership and continue public uses. And then replat north side for lease sites. That's, you don't want that. I would like to strike that sentence and replace it with rezone north side to park for much needed boat trailer and vehicle parking. Why don't we just re strike that last sentence and leave retain land ownership and continue public uses? Right. And then we yeah. can do whatever is most needed. Okay, that gives you more flexibility. <coughs> but maybe we could um, revisit that use later. Yeah. Is everybody okay with just striking the sentence? Yeah, I think so. Because yeah. I'm just not that familiar with what we're looking at. Busy weekend, you can't find the park. Yeah. Well, yeah, I park up there all the time. I do too, it's, yeah. It's, not a, it's hard just to even get in there a lot of times. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, in another ten or twenty years, we're not going to be using cars anymore. Well, when that happens, I guess we can change it. Yep. Okay. So Uber's going to haul my boat down there. Oh yeah. No, and everything is. It'll levitate. A drone will lift so, it over there. I just I made a. If you can go up a little bit, Courtney. I just changed the see I struck out in the past has been used in a, as an ice skating area. Sure. I just removed that. Okay, thanks That's for letting us know. The bottom of that same page, um, looking at the Kenan Peninsula parcel viewer, I was surprised to see that the south half of the travel lift dock is an undesignated land, as are the docks serving bicycle seafood. So I was wondering who owns that property. What do you mean it's undesignated? When you click on the lot. It's not even that typical offset. It's like that is owned by the state or something. Like that. So just a note that that might be to be understood. You got that, Jack? Just All it. right. So okay. It's it's ours really yeah. Take that. <laughs> and then doing. Are we ready to flip the page? Yeah. So okay. Flip the page to where you go, Carver Basin. Um, Jack, I think you added northeast, not me. Is that correct? Also, also includes the northeast boat launch. Boat harbor basin. You've got to get the names right. I just see also includes the east boat harbor. Okay, launch. so it's called northeast, not east. The correct name is northeast boat launch. It's always just referred to as north and south when with people that have boats. Yeah. I know, but I, the boat I removed the word small. Thank you. All throughout. Um, yes. I looked up in the harbor map. Yeah. And it's, it is confusing. It's called Northeast. So that's a whole different. That, I'm just going on what the Harbor Master posted the names. And it's called the Northeast Boat Lunch. Right. Even though North and South right here. a whole lot more sense. And well, we should change it from East. Yeah. Harbor boat Whether it's Northeast or North, right. I don't care. But right. East isn't right. And east nobody right. calls it East. So should we just take away East and change it with North? Or well, northeast, just northeast. make it northeast. 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 Got it. No, we like could it. Northeast. we could add another one in the southeast someday, so we'll leave it northeast. And then uh, boat launch and access to and then add. It says to X, add, and Z floats. Because that's what they're doing. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
right. every time we change, it gets a little bit longer, and the book gets a little bit bigger. And <coughs> well, this, yeah, this is this is the so, municipal land right. inventory with to our recommendations, not a history book. As simple as possible. And, as you wish, but I, had, I had found these references really fascinating. They are fascinating. Okay. Um, so my rec next page, please. Yeah. My recommendation, I put it at the bottom because it must refer to a bunch of this stuff. Um, subdivide the parcel from the fence line north. So we're talking about... What, where are we? I'm, I'm lost. Let's see, where... She should be on page that says starts with ship lift, rails, and transfer carriage, travel yes, lift, road easement, okay. vessel washdown yes, facility. But I don't so know where the fence is, what you're talking about on that one. Help me find the fence. Well, it is, it is part of the docks, basin, and breakwater category. This includes Spring Creek Campground, that one, the bottom one, the bottom box. Mm -hmm. So this parcel that includes the Spring Creek Campground, North Dock, Barge Ramp, Rock, Breakwater, okay. Travel yeah. Dock, all that. Yep. So subdivide the parcel. Well, that's not this. We can't do that kind of an action. You you want to make that a recommendation? A recommendation. Subdivide the parcel. Yeah. Recommendation: to subdivide the parcel from the fence line north. So you know where the fence. Can you is? just say for what purpose we'd subdivide it? And I'll continue. Okay. And rezone as park to ensure public use as a campground and beach parking. So what? Why don't we just put subdivide uh, the lot to separate the park? To separate out the park, and from, they can the they can determine where. Okay. I I, I, I think the fence, fence line's line a little. And I'm sure that they will use that yeah. when they do the survey. Okay. So. Then, add a note about the public access. Subdivide. Step. Just a minute. Okay. She's sure. making notes. Sorry. Subdivide the lot to separate out the park. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good. And I know that previously we had a little paragraph about easements, but would it be okay to add a note referring to the public access easement to the basin, boat launch ramp by the fisherman's float, so people don't forget that they do have public access there? Um, didn't, didn't they may not after a lease happens. That's why we have to preserve it. The public. Well, you've got to keep yes. access. I mean, well, you know, at the I, time I that, that something split, you would you'd divide mm -hmm. access. Access to which piece now? To what? So Fisherman, now it's called Fisherman's Float. But there is a ramp there that has been dedicated to the public, piece of public access. Okay. Into the basin it's there. Into the basin. Yeah. Okay. So if you don't mention it, it will be forgotten. And that's why I want to add that note here. There is a public access. So in descri then we added in description, not mm -hmm. recommendation. Right. So yeah. under the description, um, be at, uh, add a sentence, public access, uh, there, there are public, ac there, public access to the, f there is public access to the fishing ramp. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Just As a part of the description. Just so just lost. like after breakwater in Thailand's and public access to the ramp. Yeah. Is it a ring? It's a boat launch. It's a boat launch. Yeah. yeah. It's a launch. To the boat? To the, I thought it's it was a, a fishing That's ramp. what I just said. You ramp. mean a boat launch? There is a boat launch. So do you, yeah, it's do, a boat do you ramp. calling it two different things? A fishing ramp and a boat ramp? Well, it's by the fisherman's float. That's the new name for that in the boat harbor, in that boat basin. In the boat harbor or over at Smack? Smack in the basin. In the basin. It's called, yeah. believe it or not, it's called the North Basin. Because it's always been called the North Dock. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that yeah, North Wall there. Is <laughs> okay. Anyway, but please note the public has a right to use that. Um, okay. And then the next page in the middle under Interior Service Roads. Yeah. Note public access route through Smith. Wait, under which one? The middle. Description. Interior service, service, service roads. roads, yeah. So it says all roads south of Jellison, but this is not true. There is a public access route through Smith. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. You know, those are not, uh, those, uh, everybody believe the, the far side of SMIC is what you're talking about. Far not side meaning SMIC, east? Not through SMIC. Mm. I just, through so SMIC. everyone understands, this is not a public access, this is a public access, this is not, this right here that everybody uses is not a public access through mm -hmm. SMIC here, it's way in the back. Clear in the back. Mm -hmm. These right of ways, I can tell you right now that right. They're, they're, these properties are being replatted and right. are in the process of being replatted. And, and so those aren't known, they're not listed as public access at all. And they should clarify be. where is SMIC? This is all SMIC. So not. Not Olga. No. Olga's not SMIC. Olga is. It, oh. It's this. Delta is SMIC? Del this is your public access here. This is also SMIC. This is SMIC. Basically, this whole thing is considered the SMIC Industrial Center. But when we're talking about accesses and roads, these roads are public access. You go down Nash, Jellison, mm -hmm. over to Delphin down and on to Sorrel, but not, and everybody believes that Nash, they can come here, go across Morrison, and straight down this way to contact, that is not a public access. That is, this is a city um, utility use, but it's only for the travel lift, and everybody uses it. So I can tell you that they're in the process right now of redoing lease lands out there and relaying out all of it before we even move forward with what are going to be public accesses and what are going to be private lease. So how does someone access the stick boat basin if south of Jellison is not public? You could come down here uh -huh. and here. This, this area right now is, but none of these are actual required public accesses. They're just how you guys have always accessed things, but it's never been recorded as one. But the road does go over to that new parking lot where you can get onto the float, the new float there. And and it could possibly be replatted also. So then how would you get on and off the float? You may not be able to from there, depending on how the so Coast they Guard put in comes a new, in and what they... But they put in a new access then because... Fishing yeah. tie up to that float. So there always okay. would be access to that there area. There would be access to it, but not, I mean, the roads might change. That's, so what, that's okay. why we just mentioned public access. We just said it as a generic okay. Okay. public yeah. access. So interior access. service roads, the roads that the city owns under that title, interior service roads, that's what should be in the description. The roads that are city owned right of ways. So which ones are? Jellison, Delphin, and a portion of Sorrel? Those are the ones the city owns. So why are all those other ones in there? Why yeah. don't we just say interior service roads, Jellison, Delphin, and a portion of Sorrel? Yeah, we can take that. Well, let's see, yeah, because that's... We're, we're adding what we don't, but we should be saying what we have, and right. that's in parentheses. Yep. Okay. And what we have gives access to areas over there, so right. we're okay. Yeah. yeah. Even okay. Though, yeah, there's multiple <coughs> ways. Okay, so retain ownership and current use. Okay. Yep. Do we? Do we? Do you so got are that? You striking something or not? Yeah, you're oh, striking yeah. everything you except the. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're striking everything except. Yeah. You've from lived the, here for a couple of months from now. The Don't you have this stuff down? <laughs> so go. Yeah. Oh uh, no, no. Just yeah. Under description, take that out and the parentheses. <coughs> so just hi uh, highlight it, strike it and make it red so everybody knows that we removed it. Yeah. So could you read it, what it will say? Right of way, Jellison, Delphin, and a portion of Sorrel. Because that is the interior service roads that are part of the municipal lands. That is constructed as... That is... To be that that is what is listed as the interior strike. service roads. So it will read description? Right of way, Jellison, Delphin, and a portion of Sorrel. Maybe a comma between Jellison and Dell. Yes. I like commas. Okay. They're my favorite. Yes. All right. We are 45 <laughs> minutes into 
the work session? Can we move? We still have a lot of pages. Okay, so the next page at the top, North Water Storage Tank. Please correct 2301 Hemlock Street to Crab Apple Street. We did. That we have it. That was done. Yeah. Um, in the middle of that, Gold Creek Tunnel, Waterfall Bear Mountain, strike, lease her sale with the Sound Development Plan, and rezone to park. Nope. I cannot imagine nope. changing the scenic backdrop. We talked about that, didn't we? Yeah. We, no, we, we already, we we already did talk about it. it. And so, so did your council. <coughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, we could. Will you rezone it to park? Is that what you no, no, no. no. We've got the way it's written, just... lease or sale with sound development plan is what's okay. been. I missed that, and I'm going to have to pursue that. Okay, thank you. The next page is Gold Creek Tunnel This is historic. I love it. And I guess we talked about it. Verify and correct First Lake, Second Avenue. But no, never mind. Let's move on. Um, this is important, and I made separate notes about this. The Which one? Board, I'm on uh, Resurrection River Floodway, east of the airport. Mm -hmm. Page 19. Yep. Yeah. Page 19, thanks. The, um, the Bear, Creek Fire, Bear, Bear Creek Flood Service Area Board had a meeting last night, and we need to develop. <coughs> develop a um, conservation overlay district that... Did you read what we already have? Well, develop a conservation overlay district? I have seen that. Okay. Um, so add, add easement for conservation and possible flood, future flood planning and mitigation. Work with the Seward Bear Creek Flood Service Area Board to encourage donation on remaining parcels to city and rural or easements for conservation. Um, that whole section, we really need to, in our city, we have some city parcels there. They need to be changed with this easement for flood planning and mitigation. And that's what we will work with on the Seward, Blood, yeah. Seward Flood Board and Service Area. And, and that's and why, yeah. yeah. That's okay. why we have developed that. A conservation that overlay, because they would be involved in that. They will be involved in it. In yeah. Anything that's a yes. floodway, they will be involved with. Excellent. Excellent. Um, the Japanese Creek North, uh, next, next page, Japanese Creek North Forest, which is Update to include Deep Road in the description. Um, do we include all our city roads on these, or wh why would we include the city road? Because it's part of the levy? It is the it levy. Is the yeah. Levy. The road is the levy. Yeah. It says levy road project. You want it to, to say levy Dickraff road project, or what? It should just say Dickraff road. Let's see. No, it's not it's levy road, right? It was the levy road project. Yeah. Those resolutions. That's, that's part of the resolution it, title. Then later on, you guys renamed it to Dick Graff Road, but mm -hmm. it's can still. We just, can we just put in there currently the named Dick Graff Road? Road. That would be just at the end, in parentheses. Yeah. At the end. Ahead, currently named Dick Graff Road. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on. I have a note for the July Creek levy. It's platted as 100 Delphin Street. Plan is right away and you name to avoid confusion. What? I think 100 Delphin Street is really confusing. It needs a name, basically. It needs a name. What do you mean? It's the 4th of July, July Creek, Creek Levy. Levy and so its address is at 100 Delphin Street. It's got a so name. It goes all along. It's 15.46 acres. It parallels the creek. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. So you mean the it whole is, thing isn't 100 Dolphin Street. Yeah, the whole thing is called 100 Dolphin Street. Even though it's 15 acres long. Unless yeah. it was subdivided. 
Yeah. But it's so, I, I get right. that, but what mm -hmm. I'm saying is right now it's 15 acres and it is all considered 100 Dolphin Street. Right. Huh. So when I looked it up, I believe on the map, it was this right away, this long, skinny right of way. So why don't we replant it as a right of way and rename it to avoid confusion? That's a different thing That's than we're working on. Tonight we're working not a on. Well, we're retaining the recommendation is to retain land ownership and maintain as access to the quarry and as a flood control levy. Right. If you don't want it to be 100 Delphin Street, can it be Delphin Street? We make take the 100 off, but I, I mean I don't I don't. I don't know what to come up with. So yeah. yeah, it's a right of way <coughs> and it's all Delphin Street. Is that it's, right? It's not listed as a right of way. Anyway, I thought that was. Let's just it, it, yeah. Um, a narrow winding parcel. So we'll leave that thing. one for the next yeah. time we do this. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. It's just if, if the description, the, the description's the clear. Public facility land suggesting we won't. Um, this is really come up in the news, and you can do what you like. Yep. You will hope correct um, the Jesse Lee home located in the northwest corner of this parcel. Where, where are we at? Where are we? All that was removed and put into parks. Yeah. So oh, I don't okay. know where into parks. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cemeteries are in parks. No. They're cemeteries. They're Jesse Lee Park. Home. Jesse Lee Home is moved to parks. Home? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
of the public purpose only from the deed in 97. <coughs> And then I put, although this is the only city-owned parcel located on this side of the bay, that is large enough to meet the needs of a city shop. That's not true because we right. have more it's not true. property. I took that so out, I right? took that out too. Good. Okay. Other Thank you. Um, playground. Mm -hmm. The recommendation to sell as a single-family home. Change that to single-family lot. It does. It is there. Single-family yeah. lot. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mount Marathon Trailhead, rezoned to park. Uh, yeah, clear and develop a small trailhead park. Oh, no. Strike that. Um, clear and develop a small trailhead parking lot. There is no room for cars in that access. It has to be reserved for the emergency vehicle access. So, strike that. They, they are allowed to park on the street. Um, the so strike clear and develop the small trailhead parking to serve the trail and add rezone to park. The area in front of the gate must be kept clear for emergency we, we, vehicles in response. We did realize that, Carol. Good. Excellent. Um, but the wish was that if there was an opportunity to purchase more of that land around the trailhead, to put some parking there instead of having it all on the street. But we did realize it would there would still have to be an opening for uh, emergency vehicles. Is there more land around there? Not that we know of, but that was the wish. But if it were to come sure, available, yeah. then we would have the opportunity to so, reference this. But did you strike clear and develop a small trail? No, they added no, that. No, okay. we added that. Should it, shouldn't it be predicated on if more land could we're splitting hair. It's really okay. But I'm going to say this: our previous city manager put up a big sign that said, "Yes, you can park on either side," and cars immediately blocked emergency vehicles. So the neighborhood <coughs> has fought really hard to get those arrows that say you can't park in this access. And I would like to maintain that. What? Access. Well, but I, I would mean, think that the emergency management the department yeah. would go out <coughs> there and and make sure that. There's no way anybody can park in their access. And this was yeah. also clear and develop a small trailhead parking. That's if it was available, we clear it, we develop it, and we put it in. That's what you guys have talked about. Right. Ever. And if we did that and put it in, we would take into account emergency access yeah. and yes, weather. Absolutely. Yeah, we wouldn't block it. It wouldn't be blocked. And you don't want to mention that the area in front of the gate must be kept clear? That's pretty, I think that's, that's pretty says straightforward. That yeah. Okay. I mean, it's a, it's a it's a road. It's a jeep trail. Yeah. Road. I mean, it's. People come and they think they can drive their cars up there. That's why there's a gate, but it's a road with a gate in front. It says right. emergency vehicles and no parking signs on both sides. Okay. I, it, it's, so it's, do it's, you want to do the rezone? Do you want it to possibly yeah. be rezoned to parking? Yeah. Sure. Fine yeah. That. Sure. Yeah. We could rezone it to park. It should. It should be a park. Yeah. It should be a park. Okay. It's too small for a house. Pretty, All right. Pretty tiny. Um, yeah. So this is a trailhead. Yeah. Yeah. Here I can reveal that it's named for Harry Sotaro Kawadi, not Albert. That was his nephew. Oh, good catch. Harry. Wait, which one? Soda. That's Sotaro, true. S O T A. T A what? Mm -hmm. R O Sotaro. Okay, name for Harry Sotaro Kawabi. Change that, please. Thank you. Landscaping Christmas tree has an interpretive sign and a freestanding mural. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Um, so the next one, Benny Denson Park Review Card. Mm -hmm. The update is it's now Kinetis Liberal Replat as a number. One four seven three three zero four six. So that should be in there. It was replatted as a single parcel. We did do that. Got it. Okay. Oh yeah, and single parcel. And then I thought to list the Dairy Hill Lane right away elsewhere, as it's not part of this plan. You 
I don't think we list all of our city streets anywhere as municipal land, so yeah, you could take that. <laughs> take that out. Um, so it's been re it's been replatted and it is a single parcel. So just say retain land ownership dedicated as a conservation overlay district to remain undeveloped for flood relief. Take out the middle sentence. Yeah. Yep. Um, the next one sort of breaks my heart under Home Lane Pocket Park, mm -hmm. but I would consider this for surplus sale. Absolutely nobody knows that is a former part of Key Lakes Park, and maybe one of the adjacent landowners would pay money to buy it. We could put that in our land day. So my we weren't sure what the easement there, why there was, uh, provides access easement to lot 1B and lot 9A of the Snowden subdivision. Right. So if that access is still required, right. we can't there's, take away there's, there's legal land access. On each side of that, on each side of that, actually, that is called the pocket park here. Land on either side of Well, we don't. We, we could take Pocket Park out of there, but my my concern is, is it a, is it providing access to other parcels? Because if it's providing access, then we can't sell it, because then we we we'd be taking access to parcels away, and you can't landlock them if we sold that. Part. And then if we sold it to somebody, then we have to do a replat to add that portion. I mean, I guess it could be at the cost to somebody else, but... So let's take, just call it Hume Lane Access Easement. And because it's not a park, we're not right. going to use it in, and we had rezoned a park was already struck. Um, but is it all an easement? I mean, is there is there a piece of property that could be... Sold off? I guess I don't, I'm not familiar with it's which part so is easement, which part tiny. isn't. It's <coughs> I don't see the part of the page that has what it is. It is 0. 0.22 acres. And that includes the part that is an easement. So the part that is an easement, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. So it's and it's really right now even. zoned urban residential. Yeah. I don't know if that's what the other parcels are zoned around there. Well, but it should stay that if that's what thought, they are. I thought that, well, I thought that's small. Like no, it's a quarter of an acre. That's a pretty big chunk. Well, I just want to make I sure. I don't know how much that's. If it is, if there is a portion that's sellable. Right. Maybe so. We sell it. Okay. So, uh. I'm getting there. <laughs> we could say, um. Sell. With okay. acts with access so as required. We have it for easement you. as required. Isn't this parcel right here? Yes. Pretty big. Yeah. But so the road access. See the road access. Thing. Goes right through it to that lot on the other side. Mm -hmm. But that oh, but, but that actually could be just the top corner. That's actually a sellable lot. Oh yeah, you could come around I from the other side. Yeah. I mean, you could just do this. Well, you've this got the cabin on here. the cliff and the other access over there. You mean dick rafts and so you have hatches? On the cliff right there. That's oh, access, this here too. and then that property right the next one over. Yep, right this there. Too. That access comes from that too. So mm -hmm. Lindsay's and Colstad's both have the access that easement that's Through allowed. Here. Right there. Yeah, but this could be connected because this is the road here, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So you could connect this. I mean, I'm not sure they would do it, but if it was available, someone no. could actually. That's a good idea to shorten that up. I mean, you could shorten it up and you could move that around and it it, it could make, make it money. Yep. So you're saying this road right here? Yeah. Yep. 
this is a house I understand that ends it. this. So you you're saying you could cut here, bring this road up, or even this and road go straight like this. here. Yeah. Take this off the east side of that home, lot, home park or home lane or whatever it is. I think geographic, like. Well, too steep. well, I mean, but, guess I guess if you chose to sell it, and then they did the engineering for the road. And so, what I mean, is if somebody what, wanted to buy that part, that lot, they could set up an easement to get access. Can you click on that lot again? Because mm -hmm. it's not Hilm Lane. We can't call it that. We have to call it something else, which it doesn't. It's What's got 1102. It's, it's got an address. It's 1102. But it isn't. It, lane. Let, let's just say sh, home lane lot. Lost my page. Oh. How about, yeah, and with ability to sell with a sound. There you go. Home there you go. lane lot. Yes. Home lane lot. Mm. Well, well, that's there. It is there. It's on, it's on it's under address. address. It is on the address. But, but yeah. Home lane lot and access placement. Yeah, an access easement. And then, so, let's sell with sound development plan. Yeah. Sounds good. I think we could make some money off of that. It's a pretty desirable property. And I, I hate like to say money. that to the beautiful trees that used to be part of Two Lakes Park, but that was then. Um, there's a bunch of red on Jesse Lee Memorial Park. I think that's all. Because um, we moved it all. Yeah. yeah. So I can skip that. Um, Spring Creek Campground. So here we are again. And I'm not sure why it's both places, but let me speak to it. Same thing. Is this where we should say subdivide the parcel from whoever the language was before? This duplicates. The on the page. Uh, uh, this is access from Sorrel Road. I, uh, I think that's a different parcel, isn't it? I don't know where, what they talked about Sorrel Road. Sorrel Road kind of curves around. Can you pull this parcel up? Mm -hmm. But it doesn't. It's not. One four five three four zero oh, four zero. Oh. It's access from Nash Road. Basically, duplicates what we it's just in talked the middle about. Middle of the bay. Yeah. <laughs> can, can you put in the parcel number, which yeah, what is, it? is one four five three four zero four zero. So this is where the confusion comes. That's why it has a Sorrel at the Sorrel address. Because it goes all the it's way. Because it goes all the way around. around. And, and some of that over there. Yeah, so it <laughs> is accessible from Nash, and you go around on the Dolphin on the Sorrel. You can't cut through. Oh, so it's so got it, beachfront. It's only from Nash Road. So we're this portion is talking about that area there. However, the whole entire lot... Goes touches on the two other areas, side. which yeah. is why it's named the weird name. Right. Okay. Right. I don't think there's any way to get around that. But if, if this is where Spring Creek Campground at SNCC has its very own category, I think that's where we should address um, subdivide, subdivide this parcel into a campground, an official campground, an official park parcel. Because it's not. And they, they've been prohibited from developing it or putting any infrastructure there because it's just zone industrial. Well, our recommendation was to retain use as a primitive camp area, maintain the public access to the beach. That's our recommendation. I'm not sure if primitive should be kept. Well, primitive means it doesn't have water or sewer or electric. If it's a, a camping area, should we can you change it from industrial to camp? Right. To park? It to park. park. It would have yeah. to be rezoned. Rezoned. And then, and then that whole 
again, maintain the beach at public access, that's coming from the further side, the Sorrell side. Mm -hmm. So we would have to, you, I mean, you could, plan and zoning could request a rezone, maybe at the same time that the parcels are being replatted for the Coast Guard. I don't, I mean, unless you just want to put rezone it to park, doesn't necessarily mean that whole area is going to always be a campground. Right. That's that, that's my thing is, you know, we're saying, hey, we want to have this industrial area over there. And there might be a point in time where a campground isn't appropriate there. Well, and um, it's, so I, I just I'm kind of more on the thing is I, I, you know, I think it's great to use it as long as it makes sense as a campground. But I don't. I do not want to nail that down as a park forever. You know, well, hundred years from now, when that. all of a sudden, in, you know, industrial area and this and that. I mean, it's a big open space. And state. it comes into your guys's SNCC overlay. At one right. point, it was talked about that you don't maintain the whole area as a campground. That you give the ability mm -hmm. to somebody to build possibly bunk housing or something else out there. And so I think you would put yourself into a corner if right. you're just saying. I, I just don't want to, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to tie down the future of that we, area. Don't we have enough in our recommendation? Rec Isn't the recommendation funny? There, there is a, a allowed with a conditional use permit or a administrative permit, you can al allow a municipal campground in an industrial area. So it's allowed with, with that zone. So let's just leave it there. Okay. Well, I would strongly disagree and say that tourism there is really important. As long as the salmon are running, we will have people that want to car camp over there and fish. There is a dedicated public access along Spring Creek, which is a natural stream. It goes from Nash Road to the bay. And we say yeah, right. retain use. This is our recommendation. We are agreeing to re retain the use of a camping area and to maintain the public access to the beach. Right. And I would like it rezoned as park. And I don't want it rezoned as park. Yeah. And so. And I'm adamant I don't want it rezoned as park. I'm adamant that you okay. must preserve it for park. And I don't want to preserve it for park. Well, so that will be discussed and voted on when this comes before us at, for action. I just don't have, we just have a and different let's move way of on. looking at it. I think what's there is a good in between. Okay, so that's all for that. The next page. Um, so the top of the next page where it says city generators, water well, and citizens ball field. This is pretty key. This is where we could add at the end, paid pedestrian staff and shelter. Where, where, where page are, are you Which at? Page? I do not city see that. Water well and oh, that's in. Oh, that's that's you skipped down. a page. That's okay, that's which is fine. Let's just go to <laughs> page 29. <laughs> <laughs> page 29, city generators, okay. water well, and citizens ball field. Yeah. Okay. We have and, and, and animal shelter already added there. What else? Right. Okay. Um, skip, skip, skip. I'll do the question spell so we go fetch that. Yeah, that's part of the housekeeping. Um, so, um, I'm sorry, my pages don't correspond. So, this is at the middle of the GCI fiber optic cable page. Yep. 34. Okay. 34. So the sewer chamber of commerce. Yep. That lot. Appraise the parcel so the public knows the value of this subsidy. Evaluate lease payments in a new lease, which is coming up very soon. So none of the, the chamber parcels have ever been appraised. And I think that would be an important thing for the public to this was a discussion that we had about what value the city gives to the chamber through no cost land leases and that that would we discussed that that would be important to know and um, I'm not sure how we addressed it in 
and maybe it was in our action at the end or something, something about because they get bed tax and they get all these no cost, cost leases and just people should know what the value of all that is. Half the, half the bed tax. They, they generate half the bed tax for the city. They generate it? Yeah, no, because, they, because it was because of them it. that was put in place. It was that, that bed tax was put in. They don't receive half. They receive two hundred fifty thousand okay. dollars. See, it's even been reduced okay. now. Okay. All right. Just we, but so you knew that, and she knew that, and he knew that. Yeah. I did. Now I do. So I think more people should know that. <laughs> All right. It, com will, it comes up every time that, that comes. Yeah. Up. yeah. We can add the appraisal costs. Okay. That could go in with their. I think every five years these city leases have to be appraised mm -hmm. when those harbor leases come up. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Um, skip, skip, skip. And then it goes the same thing with the derby booth, which is in the middle of the page that has lighthouse gifts at the top. So same same thing for the, the derby booth. Appraise the parcels for public bills today. Thirty seven. Yeah. And we also added lease to the chamber for one month at no cost and then lease for payments the next 11 months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wonder about that. We do too, but we don't know how to deal with it. But it's there. <laughs> we, we put that so we can figure out, like, yeah. it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's just, it's just, it just it's sits just something there. that says, hey, there's a, there's a, you get there, it's used for one month. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's, I don't like it. Yeah. It's very expensive for the city. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We've got to put the booth somewhere. And that somewhere. expires mm -hmm. in 2022. So, so that's written there that maybe you, when it comes up, they'll look at it again and say, how much is this? That's and then the, the, the then the chamber has to fight for it. That's a good time. Okay. Um, so there's no extension on the bedroom that came out towards tours. Lease expires 11-11-2027. No extension. So what happens when the lease expires without an extension? They have to come they, to the chamber. Let me come to the council and or the admin and reapply. The lease will be required. Okay. Excellent. Um, the middle of Hotel 360. Yep. Who pays for the lease? The users of the private parking lots? Most of the railroad land and city is yeah. confusing. So, um, hotel, I mean, the bottom of that, Harbor Holdings. Mm -hmm. Hotel 360 has an exclusive float mortgage. What code applies to, to the legality of exclusive float mortgages? Again, that's not this, our Billywick. Okay. So they, they bought that float, I thought. So it's they theirs. did, yeah. They put it in and everything. Yeah, yeah. they, they pile dragged it some, all mm -hmm. ourselves. Okay. Right, and somebody gave them an exclusive forever. Wow. What a, yeah. <laughs> what a good. I don't know how that happened, but. <laughs> <laughs> as far as we are. Okay. Okay. Did that property go up in value? Courtney, are you adding periods so and commas skip, as they um, needed? Quite a few pages okay. to the lease plans section in the state area. Okay. Um, Which page? 40. 40. 40, 40, 41, 42, 43, somewhere okay. in there. Mine says 42. Uh, lease lands, I have 42. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, so the cellular phone yep, power, so mm -hmm. um, verify the lease. Rarely are cell tower leases so short. The lease expires on June 30th, 2025. That's really short term. Well, that's... It, it should be a 30 past that. 
anyway, it's, that's it's, just something to verify. That, that was verified. It was. Wow. Yeah. They let you do that. Okay. Um, the NOAA weather station, weather radio tower, if it's where, I think it is, on Nash Road, uh, next to Spring Creek. This satellite dish and structure look abandoned. Verify this is still in use or remove it. Well, they still it have a still lease. In use, and they wow. have their lease, and it expires in 2037 with the option of two 10 year extensions. Two five two years five is what it says two here. Two five years. Okay. Um, we just looks kind of junky. Um, and the next one, do you see that communication? That came up to the end. Of it also has a lease that expires in 6 of 2023 with two five year extension options. Okay. Um, the middle of that discuss relocating this tower to a safer site, the Coast Guard Radio Locator Beacon. As it notes in the description, the shoreline is eroding. And this is an emergency um, U.S. Coast Guard Radio Beacon Tower. It's time to, to move it. So I just want to put that in there. Discuss relocating the tower to a safer site. You it's want a, that it's, recommendation? Well, it's a no-cost lease. We own the property. We want to retain the land ownership and, I guess... Uh, when, shouldn't the Coast Guard make that request? Discuss... Yeah. Well, well, we... We don't want them to... I mean, it's not our fault that the land is eroding. Uh, so they couldn't come back at the city because we're leasing them eroding land, but we shouldn't have it sit on land that is eroding. So retain land ownership, discuss uh, alternate site with lessee. There you go. Because the city could come up with perhaps a better location. Right. And this is the place to do it. Mm -hmm. Alternate sites. Mm -hmm. And they could maybe co-locate on top of the hill with but we got to get them to a safer spot. Discuss alternate site with, with yeah. Oh, you guys are great. Thank you. Um, skip, skip, skip. Rainbow is a mess. Rainbow is simply a mess. So I made some several <laughs> notes on Rainbow. Um, There's the a set numbers are there. terrible. So let's go to the page, I believe it's um, Rainbow Fiberglass and Boat Repair, LLC. It's at the top, L15-074. It could be at the bottom of 45. Okay. Exactly. 45 and then it goes on to 46. I think they're two different ones. So once it ends in 074. Okay. Yeah, that's a 46. Yep, that's, that's 074. 048 was before it. Mm -hmm. So 3, 4... 09 Morris Avenue has a parcel number. Gosh, I just read all these things. So, yeah. I, can that I has just... A that has a Kena Pinsa parcel number. If you want to include it, I have we, it. Yeah, we will include it. I have it written in line, too. Oh, good. Um, the other thing is, we'll also update these because those leases have been subleases somewhere else. Right. So the names will change. Yeah, we'll put a sub-lease in okay. it. It's all Rainbow just skipped down. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's see, what else do you have at Rainbow? So that's great to get those things in here. Um, yeah, we questioned that during our thing, if they were really... Well, you are at Sawmill Tideland, I believe. If you don't have any changes so there, we'll move on. Big, there's a big parcel, the Rainbow Replat, lot 4A-1, lot 7, 3305 Morris Avenue. This is a huge parcel, and, and you can probably pull it up. Uh, I, I don't know where parcel. you're at. Gosh, I don't know either. I've got way too many different pages. What did you say the address was? Three, three. So... 3305 Morris. Is, is that in our docket, that, that document? That address is not listed, but it is listed as a rainbow replant of lot 4A-1, lot 7. 
are, are you looking at a, a note or are you looking at our packet? Because I'm not seeing, I see three Raybo listings on mm -hmm. this and none of them have the wording that you just read. I can tell you what she's talking about. Okay. So it's, it it's when, we, when we did the original replat for Raybo, it renamed all of those areas. So 35, 3305 Morris Avenue is still city land, but when we replatted it, it's this. Is it 3409 then? See here? All this right now, this is your 3305. When we replatted Raybo here and here, we renamed all of these into the Raybo. Well, right now we have these addresses for Raybo 3409 Jellison, 3409 Morris, and 208 Nash right. Road. The legal description is the Raybo replat number seven. Check what Courtney's pulled up. This plat, replat has never been submitted, and so that needs to be submitted so that that is updated. No, that is submitted, and it says Central Replat Lot 1A, 4A1. That is the newest. Pull up the um, view additional details. Scroll down. Hit the view PDF plat. That's the newest one. But see, that doesn't take care of what he just vacated. It does, because it is included in that 3409 Morris Avenue, which the 3305 Morris is not Rabo property. It's just got the Rabo replat in its title. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, prior to this coming to us in September, all these Raybos will have um, a new title, hopefully just the name of the lot or something because these naming things by the sub lessee and right. then them getting subbed again are and confusing. And then if you could put it all in under one piece of property if that's been replatted then this will clean right. this all up well and it will never change the legal description until another replat comes forward right. and then that time it's just like we did with the polar seafoods we changed the mm -hmm. title to where it doesn't include the name of the business right and so so we okay started you guys started that process and we just every time a replat comes forward we're going to have to do that okay okay uh, exit Maroon parcel, there's no street address <coughs> on the uh, Canopus of Road parcel viewer. Exit Maroon Flat Lot 414. Uh, are we still? Which page are we um, on? I don't know where that is. It's, it's part of the lease property, and um, oh, she's it's, on a separate it's a piece Morrison of paper. Avenue. It's a Morris that. Avenue oh, address, know. and I'll gladly get is it supposed to be in municipal lands inventory and it's not? It's not. It's not municipal lands or it's, it's not in here? It, it's part of the Raybo. Okay, oh, so yes. you're going to clean the Raybo up. Okay, yeah. she's okay. cleaning the Raybo up. That's good to know. I'm cleaning it up. <laughs> good luck. Get over there right now. <laughs> okay. I'll be happy to see Raybo go. Um, so now we're going to Thailand's. Um, Thailand un unsubdivided remainder. Can you help me find that page? The Thailands are kind of sprinkled. At the bottom of page 46, we have Sawmill Tideland, and that's the only thing I see that says mm -hmm. Tidelands. Oh, 51. Tideland. It's, it's Tideland. 51 has yeah. Tidelands. Yeah. Oh, Tideland, Tideland unsubdivided, unsubdivided remainder. Well, we have a lot of Tidelands. We do, yeah. <laughs> so they are separate pieces. They have separate parcel numbers. Okay? Okay, so the top of the page, it says Tideland unsubdivided remainder. Yep. It's the middle of your guys' page. So it has yep. no parcel number. Right, so... Um, but it has a survey. Of the original 1,330 
0.44 acres are city owned. And when I looked this up on the parcel viewer, it's state owned. So I'm just wondering if we, how much of this is actually owned. It says it's vacant land. It's listed under vacant land. I don't know if it's ours or not, but that's something but you can ours. find out. Yeah, it's not ours. Then Jackie? It, it's it varies. I mean, so. Well, I can see those little chunks. But this is a huge acreage, and I just wonder, this, it looks like the state owns most of the bay. But our city line goes straight across the head of the bay, so we yeah. have to have proper tide, some tide lands in our... But it looks like most of it is safe. So just try to verify how much of that unsubdivided remainder belongs to us. And why doesn't it have a parcel on Why didn't you do all this when you were on planning and zoning, Carol? <laughs> <laughs> you, you didn't have the time. Okay. So, we're moving on. We're on page 51, and we're moving from there. I'm not guaranteeing I'm going to have that. I'll do as much as I can, but it might just stay just like that. Well, we're then you might want to move it into a title called unverified property or something. Like that. Wait, iffy, iffy property. <laughs> Nobody knows what to do with property. Yeah, yeah that's so I'll figure it out. We, we'll, it's all underwater. You can have it. <laughs> yeah. it's all underwater. So next page, north, it says at the top, Nash Road Shore Property 3. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think this is mine. To retain is undevelopable to protect the new shed. Resumed our thing. It's a thin parcel, very steep, very, very long arrow property. It's 1.33 acres. It's 15.6 yeah. It's in the middle. The Nash Road Shore property, three. which one? One, two, three. three. Yeah, we're looking at three. 15.68, yeah. yeah. I, I think that one thing that we've missed is on all of these Nash Road, we talked about with a plan unit development, sell with sound plan yeah. unit development. Yeah. Because, I mean. Okay, with, but with purchasers sound plan development, because we're not. Sell with planned unit development. Which is a purchaser. Thing. Which is yeah. the purchaser providing it. Okay. Well, actually for one, two, and three, I wanted to retain those as as we shed. <coughs> it's an undevelopable and protect our new shed. Okay. Well, let's let's <coughs> okay. We're let's move go on. on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Tylen and Smith. Here it is again. Rezone the beach as park as part of the Springfield Beach with a plan to acquire easement on the remainder beach for public access. We just have retain ownership. But I wanted to rezone as park, so it's preserved for park uses. It parks are allowed in industrials. Yeah. <coughs> And I don't and I don't want parts <laughs> over in Smick. Okay, moving on. <laughs> you want to hold um, Smick. There is actually I hope I can find it for you. I walked a fog neck beach. Um, fog neck beach that we don't own a fog neck beach, do we own that? Are we on a fog neck beach? I don't think we own that, do we? We don't own a fog neck beach. Oh yeah, you own you own it's in it's in city limits. It is in city limits, but it's all right. privately owned, isn't it? Yeah. Or um, state owned? Well, this is kind of confused stuff here. I may, and my page numbers refer to a different packet, but um, you is, can help me find Tideland along Nash Road. That is what it was called. Oh, there it is. Yep. So right underneath uh, Nash 53. Road. 53. Yeah, it's five. got there. Tideland along Nash Road, yeah. 52. So very important. Ten acres of Tidelands had been preserved in perpetuity for a restrictive covenant to allow, in order to allow for the construction of the Smith Breakwater. And there's a permit. So we need to verify the Tideland parcel. It seems to be the part of 
Uh, this I, I, that's not what I don't know where she's reading. I'm in the middle. Yeah, we're where we we see what's here, but we don't see what you're reading. Because it's not there. That's why I'm, I'm pointing this out. Oh. So when I was on P and Z, this came up because the breakwater needed a place for mitigation. They were destroying habitat. So maybe Courtney, could you pull that up? On the can I please let you? Yeah. One four five three three zero two two. And two three. One four five. Three three zero two two and two three. They're right next to each other. They're big pieces. Oh, they are big. So I did a um I did a GPS thing. Yes, yes. that's where right there. Right there. The yellow square that yeah. she's got? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and the one below, below it, it is so probably three three. My oh. GPS on my phone may or may not be accurate. Kind of showed it um, partly on that blue, which is, I believe, state waters. So that we, blue is not state waters. Well, it says water. Could you could you undelete that? Could you delete that later? Delete what? Uh, delete water, the uh, water go over and change your yeah. Kind of hides stuff. Okay. So if you click on that right there, nothing will come up. That right there, right there, click for Like this? Click right next to it. Uh, now, a lot in the bay, yeah, right there. there. See, nothing comes up. So I think that's state. Oh. I that's don't, what I mean. I'm not I sure about state. that, but that's that's for that's because there is community development to determine state. Anyway, when I walk the beach, Cognac Beach, down to the parcel that's outlined in yellow right there, it shows me that this ten acre, it's a narrow rectangle that just goes across and um, we need to be sure that that easement is dedicated. There's two beautiful signs on either side showing where that strip goes out. Can you click on that little, uh, 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 yeah, the little one. The little one. Yeah, that. Click right there. How many acres is that? Well, this is a, this is in the water. 1.3. Okay. It's in the water. You're saying there's, there's 10, 10 acres of water right. <laughs> that has been set aside as conservation to the to be the give and take for the damage the North Harbor, the, right. the dock was doing. Did okay. you say you have a license number on that? Yes. What, what is that? Um, it has a permit. Okay. Number 1980-468. I'll send you the sign, the picture of the sign. 1980-468-M13. Effective May 26, 2015. So if you can add that into this Tideland along Nash Road somewhere, we'll review it and uh, assess it on the, in September. Make sure it's, it's on the correct parcel. Yeah, if you'll send that to me. I'd bring it down, but if you we might need to add a, another piece on, yeah. you know, to take some acres off. You don't keep track of these easements. So you need some. Um, the next page that starts with Nash Road Bench, 4th of July, Creek Valley. Yep. I struck the recommendation. The bench is peatlands and other wetlands. The value to our view shed as a scenic backdrop and watershed far exceeds the value of development which would be exceedingly difficult and expensive due to permits, accessibility, utilities, and other city services, including emergency response, rezone to park. This is why we have cell with a planned unit development, if somebody came forward to you and said. And, and we only said replat to separate out a section, not the whole thing. So. I don't do it. Okay, well, okay. moving on. <laughs> um, provide the, the compost area. And I think this is just below. See, mm -hmm. no bench above. Do not develop the bench. Provide conservation overlay for Spring Creek and an Adrenaline Stream. Mm. And I'm, I'm not sure where Spring Creek. This portion is not next to Spring Creek. No, it's yeah. not. It's on the yeah, other side. Yeah. So it's just like 
layered because this is generally where that. The uh, Fourth of July Creek Valley is the watershed for Spring Creek. Okay. Down. So that's why I put that in there. Moving on. Yes. Um, vacant lands, Fourth of July Creek subdivision. Here it is again. Rezone is parked to ensure public access and use of Fourth of July Creek. Where, where are you is, at? The this next is one. different from what we just talked about. Uh, the next lands. one, yeah, a, I'm on vacant 55. lands, but Fourth of right. July Creek subdivision. Yeah, that's is that block? Two? That isn't that. There's blocks behind block two that. Or three. Two, three, five, seven, six, so, seven, eight. They're separated out. Okay, so I'm going to refer to the, the parcel number one four five three four zero four nine. 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 Yeah, it's portion of block one of yeah. 1.77 acres of block eight on Sorrel Road. Where is that one? Since this plan was developed, um, our beaches have become very, very popular with locals and visitors, and this is our plan for the future. We need to plan. It's um, one four five three four zero four nine. Yes. One four five three. Three four zero four nine. So now you're under address. Oh, you're under address instead of uh, no. parcel number. It, no, the GIS ID. is having an issue. Three. You could just scroll down. Three four zero five zero four nine. One four five three four. Zero four nine. Yeah, just move. There it is. Yep. That's what we call Fourth of July Beach. And yeah. and in the state lands after that to the south. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes. Again, this falls into line of that if three flats happen, that access may change. I mean, it will still be a public access, but there might be somebody that will develop a better public access to acquire um, the area around it, just so you guys know. Okay. The recommendation is re, re, uh, retain ownership and evaluate for shoreline erosion. erosion. Mm -hmm. So where, where could you put the emphasis on access Fourth of July Beach. I mean, just watching for shoreline erosion and stuff, that doesn't, that doesn't do it. Maintain easement to beach of some sort. I mean, we got to have an easement to the beach. Right. So we can put right after that, maintain easement to beach. And which, which um, box did you put that with? Right Block at the recommendation. Block 8. Okay. Lands. Yeah, we're yeah. under vacant yeah. land, block, block eight. Block eight is where that parcel is listed. Yeah. Okay. It's under the recommendation. Maintain easement to beach. Maintain, yeah. yeah, that's what we got. Maintain an easement. Sure. Yeah. As long as there's easement, as long as people can get to the beach and there's a place to safely park and walk, I don't think it really matters if it's exactly that spot. Okay, moving on. Was that on lot? Was that on 4034 or is that on 4049? Which one is it under block? I was looking under block 8. Yeah, but there's two parcels. It's under the description. I'm not sure which. It says lot 2 is leased to the U.S. Coast Guard. Lot 2. So it would be in the first, the first, first one. block 8. Yeah. So 0.03 acres. We should maybe separate those out because there's two parcels listed. Right. That would be helpful. Yeah. Can you separate those two? And then we'll, we'll have to we'll update the maps too. We'll and, have to make new maps. And then um, on that one, uh, ask uh, Leslie to consider alternate location right. or something same, same. for the USGS tower. And then 
then block 10, same deal there. Subdivide parcel from fence line is on this part. These things kind of duplicate, I'm not sure why. Um, I, I don't understand why. Well, because we have a lease for certain lands, but then we also have portions of those lands that are still open. Vacant. Mm -hmm. Retain land vacant, and so facility ownership. Okay. Continue well, use of beach okay. next to Spring Creek as so, a campground of public mm -hmm. access to beach. Okay. Complete development of uplands as a support area to the North Dock. That's what the, we have. That's what's been there. We didn't change right. anything. Right. In the description of that block 10, did you update the last sentence? A portion of the site needs to be contained by, needs to be contained by a breakwater and filled. Just, just take that out. Okay. Gotcha. <coughs> okay. Um, surplus lands. So this we have is none. what I was referring to at the very beginning. This section, surplus lands, tax foreclosed property, and lands to consider for acquisition and planning implementation should be moved to the beginning of the plan to avoid duplication of information. It makes sense to have that discussion initially. It, the reason it's here is because there used to be parcels listed under surplus lands and parcels listed under tax foreclosed plans. At this point in time, there were no parcels, but as the format lays out, there's these that's how it was listed. So, so if, if we acquired, I'll just, if we acquired tax foreclosed property and we're in the process of updating, we would include it in this location. Right. It would be. Not up in the introduction area. Mm -hmm. um, so consider adding home lane pocket park to this surplus lands and 204 Gold Canyon Road to this list. What's 204 Low, Ca Low Canyon Road? It's the one we decided. The one behind uh, Glacier View? That we thought we should put up for. Okay, and we just say sell, but yeah. now we're saying we need to list them under surplus lands? Why not, Jackie? Well, I, because they're, they're sur all of the lands, in, uh, as you look at them, all the lands could be surplus lands. You know, your guys, you guys are making a recommendation to sell certain things. So mm -hmm. if we, if you wanted us to list surplus lands, then we should list everywhere that we put sell. To sell. Mm -hmm. And that'd be a lot. Yeah, you'd be recreating this. You'd be putting all these back in the, under another section. So we so should eliminate surplus land. land. Yeah. yeah, just eliminate this section. But isn't that a great way to clearly see what lands have to sell? So if you if you're trying to develop the land bank, you say, well, we don't have any surplus lands, there's no funding. But if you have a list that says all my pocket parts. So if we put all well, and, well and, and I get where you're coming from, but if we were to do that, we would just put a list of all city lands because that could Everything's be considered. for sale Everything at a certain price. Sure. Everything on the planet is for so sale. So that's not the case, but here's really two that we've decided. Well, you, one person it's, it's, or one it's group splitting has decided, hairs, so I don't know. yeah, I, I, I just yeah. think that you're adding more pages to a plan that already has 60 pages. So what's the difference between <laughs> surplus lands and lands to sell? No, well, no, we just said we should eliminate We're surplus lands. Eliminate the surplus lands. The whole, lands. we just said that. And eliminate our recommendations, uh, uh, the other land, the others are just lands that the city owns, whether they're vacant, leased, or whatever, and under their recommendation says whether to retain or to sell. So oh, that's and, where and it'll if say. You want me to put a list. Just no. the no. title? No. no. If somebody asks, no. you can generate one, but right and, now and it's not. I think not that needed. we could just say refer to the list and see yeah. where it yeah. says sell. You could put sell in red letters yeah. uh, after we get done Someone with Someone could the go changes. through a little bit of work. It's yeah. okay. Yep. Yeah, and if council asks for things that are open to selling, we can just make a list yeah. quickly for them. Right, yeah. Okay, moving on. So we're almost on two hours almost. on this. I know, we're getting right to the end. Um, so general policy recommendations. Yeah. Um, A, required dedication of land during subdivision refrains 
widened substantial right of way specify the width? Is it 50 feet or 60 feet? Does it depend? It depends on where it is. Yeah. It okay, good to know. And you don't um, want to wipe out properties because you make the right. right of way too wide. These terms should be for the shortest term possible to amortize development financing to allow for windows of opportunity to make changes consistent with then current policy. And I put a note, these terms <coughs> should be more consistent. As I read through this, it's like they are all over the place. So I'm just, these terms should be more consistent would be a good goal. And we found this from the last council meeting where someone said, hey, my lease is this, and their lease is that. Why can't we be more consistent? It's called negotiation. Yeah. All right, negotiation. Mm -hmm. But it's a good goal. Who's a better negotiator? Um, e, maximize long-term revenues from city lands. Note, cell tower lease terms should be negotiated as such, not per square foot, as I believe that has happened. Very, very different. Um, J, create a cemetery fund. So we just, we call that a cemetery. There's already a budget, a cemetery yeah, budget. budget. And then priorities, city shop relocation, outdoor sports arena, 3rd Avenue park improvements. I had a, a note, who's listed this and where and what is the date created? Should priorities be restricted to this plan? Otherwise, These are priorities recommended by planning and zoning commission. For right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. That is, I think, all I have. Okay, thanks. What did we schedule for hours for tonight? We started at 5.30 in order to go... We started at 5.30, two hours. So we on the calendar, we had it through. Read, read what it says on the calendar so that we know if we are... The calendar, we didn't specify an end time. We just booked this room till 9. Till nine. But not that it has to go till nine. Okay. This is on top of your eight hour day. We, we, uh. <laughs> Reminds me of my architect days. Yeah. We, um, started a half hour later than we did our last one because some people don't get off work and so I need to get here. So I'm going to ask for, uh, the, recommendation from commissioners on do they want to continue and start on the land use allowed table or end for tonight mm -hmm. land use allowed table starts on page 82 of our last packet and it is only one two three four five six seven eight nine 10 two-sided pages, so 20 pages. I'm good to work with any of you. 82 to 100. Don't do that to me. Okay, uh, so what are, you, what are we doing? Continue? I'm good to Claire? continue. Yeah, good. Yeah. good, good. Tom, yes. Craig, okay, we're going. Wait, do you pull that portion up too? Uh, I probably do. Continue to what, 8 o'clock? Oh, 7.30. Oh, till 7.30? Oh, 10 okay. minutes. Um, do I have another one in here? No, because we. this okay, is the I'll packet. Here, wait, what are we what looking want? for? Another land use allowed. No, you do if you brought the, brought the work the session time. packet from July 6th. The work session packet from July 6th. Yeah, yeah and it's the last 20 pages or so. I brought stuff mm. clear back to April. There you go. You All are right. on it. All right, we, we can share that. We'll one. share this one. We got it. Okay. What page is it on? It, uh, the last work session packet starts on page, page 82. 82. Thank you, sweetie. Yep. Does anybody need me to go take copies? I'll get there. No, nope. she's got it up there, too. Do you need paper to take notes on there, I Nathaniel, or paper. something? You got that? Okay. All right. So, land use allowed. This, now, we if you do have a copy of your definitions and you you can look, refer, um, or we're going to have our director help us when we make sure we get those new definitions 
in the correct spots on here, right? Yes. Okay. But we have all this uh, title 1510-226, first which um, is also some of the places that changes need to be made, right? Correct. You want to guide us through here, Jackie? So, um... Oh, wait, Lynn, uh, Lynn? Slide her over. Bring your chair up close. Well, she didn't retype it. She just is taking it from the code book, I think. Which yeah, this is, is just, this is part of the packet, and the yeah. TV doesn't allow us to, to yeah. zoom in like that. Oh, okay. Sorry. You can move as close as you want, Lenny. You, you know, move on up. Okay. Yeah, right here. There's a chair yeah. in front of Carol. I think that's her desk. <laughs> you can bring it. I mean, you don't. You keep moving forward, Lynn, if you need to just adjust. Okay, so go ahead, Jackie. So um, we've been asked to review the land use table, and tonight um, the packet, you know, references to start at heavy and light manufacturing. It says in conjunction. Yes. Does that mean that's where we're starting? Well, that's where previously you, Madam Chair, has stated that we needed to include that as the start. As the start? I, that we needed to include it as the, dis like to make yeah. sure we discussed it. That we discussed it at the beginning. Like, really? Just, yes, you did that. Was <laughs> that in writing? <laughs> okay. No. But you remember we, that? Would, you we, remember that? We, we also discussed that this stuff should be pushed off till we do our community right. type of Tell thing. Our, our, so I was like, you know, so our ground we want to look thing. at specifically because we've been tasked to look at heavy, and, that's me, I'm sorry. Because <laughs> um, we've been asked to kind of look at the heavy and light industrial type of thing and just look at that. It's on our thing. We could look at that, but I think most of this we really should be left until our ground truthing. Our ground truthing and we look at sections of town specifically with the public. Oh, the little pocket meetings. Yeah, because I mean again, like most of our things, there's you know, seven of us plus two more and we're like making these decisions and and and, the, and then somebody else, you know, goes, Well I didn't know that, you know, I had because we didn't really say this work session is gonna affect your property. Okay. And yeah. what if we, and I, I agree with that. I think that if we scheduled a different type of work session where we started really diving in onto those districts that we broke up would help you guys immensely when it comes to this land use table. Okay. Can you give us maps of the districts you broke up? Yeah. Yeah. We, Cause yeah, we have the, we, the big, we have the big map that we all set here and drew on. We, I can definitely send that. Okay, um, if you could send that out, and then I, when do we want to start having those meetings that we are going to specifically invite? Right. Well, and they're so always open to the public, but specifically invite people that we're going to talk about that area. This gives a great segue into that. If we scheduled a work session to discuss the districting and how you guys wanted to proceed with it, I think that, you know, we talked about it. We've talked about us doing a mail out to those district, to those people and giving sort of a timeline like, okay, we're going to do this month, we're going to do this district and get the letters out mm -hmm. to let them know and then do sort of a community overhaul i would re much rather us sit down and work on that as a whole work session instead of bouncing back and forth and around so we could provide you with the list uh, or the map and then we could figure out a strategy of how you want to do the ground truthing do you want to do it where we send out the letters do you want to do it where commissioners go door to door do you want to do it wait that the ground truth thing I thought was where we, based on what we know is on the property, we're just going to say there's four commercial. We, you 
five B and B. What? Not. Yeah. I didn't think we were going to ask each person who owned the property what they did on it. Well, at one point you guys did talk about that, so I'm just telling you the, no. the different directions that no. we were all included yeah, I don't in. Think. So if you guys want us to just. Because we have that data and yeah. we can yeah, break it no, into districts. Right. Yeah, that's the data. And we then need. we can turn around. We provided that once before, but we can break it down to where it's just districts. Right. And then we did that at the same time of making the district map. And then we can send out a community invite to everyone in that district. Correct. With what, you know, the list and the work session packet. Or a link to the work session package. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'm really getting on that no printing, guys. Um, but, and then if we started at the very beginning of the land use table and confirmed with the fact that you guys, you as a commission, agreed that we take any definition that's in the definitions that's not in the land use, we include that in the table. And then vice versa, so take we can make sure that they're, yeah. you know, right. they're in compliance with each other. Can, can, can we get this updated with uh, strikeout where the deletions in on bold and underlined are the additions based on what we the sent to council? Did mm -hmm. council final? Is that been a so it's, Where's it um, at in the approval so process? So those definition changes went forward. They're going to be introduced at the July 26th meeting and approved and discussed at public hearing at the September 9th meeting. Okay. So if we can then have that, because that changes this. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, it's the August 9th meeting because then if it's approved, it would go into effect in September. Okay. So. So we could start month. those meetings in September? We could. Okay. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Because in, in, in August, we have, in August right now is your guys' work session. We have the joint work session that will be on August 11th. And then the recommendation from staff will be at your August 3rd meeting to not have your August 20th work session because you're already going to have one the week before. Right. So what would help you at this point in time? Uh, just clarification that you guys agree sort of with a head shake that yes, we're going to go into the districts. I'll provide you guys the mapping of the districts and the breakdown of the ground truthing that we have so far mm -hmm. because we've done all of that clear out, okay. I believe, to the city limits. I'll double check. But um, if it isn't been done, it will be complete for you. And then we will initiate our first work session for that September meeting and invite District 1. Okay. Five minutes ago you said we need to have a work session to plan, but are we planning well, it right now? Because we can plan it right me, now. I'd be like, if you guys want to plan it right now, and then I can move forward with it and get it in line of the plan for yeah. our September yeah. start. Right. Because we, we've talked about it a lot in, in with council on our priorities list. We've talked about it on the ground truthing issues that, that we, uh, when we did the contract and they told us what was what. And uh, now we, and we've talked about it when we scheduled these work sessions. So, so if we did, if we, if you guys tonight agree that we already have the map, we broke it into eight different districts, we'll start with district one. We'll provide a work session packet that has the district map broke down as well as a sample letter to send to the community members in that district, letting them know that we're going to have a work session to discuss the ground truthing results and land use table at the September meeting for District 1. <clears throat> and right? our, yeah, mm -hmm. and our um, you know strategic plan or what is the other plan, the um, comprehensive plan. And the comp plan, yeah. Just make sure the comp plan's mentioned in there. Yeah, and I we 
started already with the comp plan taking and putting everything from the comp plan into an Excel spreadsheet so we can mark, yes, it's done, yes, it's being reviewed, this is the process. So oh, we've good. done that already. Good, good, good. Um, just yeah, I just, I just want to make sure when you're writing the letter that you're saying, you know, like, this is going to affect the comp plan, which is how the city makes judgments, decisions on your area. Right. And, and that you know, gives the ability for them to look at that future land right. use. Right. They'll look at that future land use and, and um, because that's what we really need to know is. So do I have approval to do a draft letter and bring it forward at the August 3rd meeting so you guys can say, yes, this is what we want in it, or no, this isn't what we want in that? To the August 3rd City Council meeting? August 3rd Planning and Zoning meeting. Special meeting. I mean, regular meeting. Regular okay. meeting. If right. we put it under discussions, is just a yep. draft form. So then that way you guys can. Yep, that'd be good. Approve what's going out or add to okay. it. Does that work, Tom? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I Carol, yeah. Something? This seems like a separate topic that wasn't advertised. But no. This, this it's has, the, this has to, do to do with the, with the land, land use, use table. table. Well, we're supposed to start review the land use table and definitions in conjunction with the uses of light and heavy manufacturing. Right. And the topic you were just discussing is, it's, I think, completely different. From, no, it's from how we're this. going to review the land use table and definitions. And that, it is to include these eight areas of town that we have designated. In my work session packet. The work session none packet is your land use allowed table. I know, but none of what you just discussed. We're discussing the process. Okay, and 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 things change, but this is not a change from the topic. This is part of the topic. This is how we're going to get to the land use. Okay, it's pretty broad. Well, our, our it starts broad and it goes. It's going to narrow down. Okay. Well, I'm prepared to start reviewing the land use table and definitions. Well, I hope you attend every meeting to help us do that, because right now we are setting up the process of the review. And the uh, next meeting that we'll approve the letter that's going to go out to the first area will be August 3rd, which is our regular meeting and a city council meeting. So we won't be in this room? Uh, no, August 3rd is our regular oh, meeting. And a then joint. August 9th is No, August 9th. Okay, August 9th. Okay, and then August 17th we have a work session. Correct. Right now, you mm -hmm. have a work session. We have no title for that because uh -huh. we are having a special joint work session on August 11th. It's not on the calendar I that was in our last packet. Okay, it's it's. So, but if we're going to just discuss land uses allowed, understanding that we, in order for us to complete this land uses allowed, we will incorporate the portions of title of the Title 15 that has been changed with definitions, mm -hmm. also including the definitions that were added in Title 15 to the land use table, which is 10, 15, 10, 2, 2, 6, right. the table. Right. And then we will um, incorporate those changes once approved. I mean, like, we'll, we'll have them in there so we know what we've been working on and then whatever gets either approved or not approved, um, then we would set our first land use allowed district map work session with the citizens of said district at your September 21st work session. Okay. 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 So uh, we're going to go till 8. So um, we have the plan to how to review, how we are um, going to continue the review of this. So let's look at the light and heavy manufacturing. Um, which and section is that? We, if we put that what? on page 101 of the packet. 101 of, of which the of last, okay, July 6th, July 6th packet, 101, 
101. Oh, the back. Okay, there it is. <laughs> so these are these are the definitions currently in our code. Yeah. Yeah. And these 52, 53, 54, and 55 are also listed alongside the in the table. Yes. Um, so on the table on page 96 of the July 6 packet, uh -huh. you have manufacturing heavy and manufacturing light. Okay. And those are light. only, you know, you only allowed heavy in an industrial area and in your by conditional use. Mm -hmm. Light manufacturing is allowed outright in industrial and it's also allowed by conditional use in an auto commercial area. Okay. So the reason that light and heavy manufacturing has come about is um, we've had a, a council member as well as a citizen want us to look at how our definitions of light and heavy are used when it comes to marijuana. And um, that includes the ability and use of our definitions and not allowing it to be allowed in commercial business districts. And per our code as well as the state statute, what they consider, you know, heavy manufacturing and light manufacturing. Um, heavy manufacturing by the state standard is anything that is... Um, used for extraction. If, you, if you're extracting materials, that's considered heavy manufacturing by the state standards. Okay. Um, we broke down through the marijuana portion of our code, we have broke down heavy and light and not allowed um, the manufacturing or extraction to be allowed in a light industrial area or light manufacturing. Okay, where does it state that in the code? Because on here, on this page 101, you've got marijuana, marijuana establishment, marijuana cultivation, marijuana, light limited marijuana cultivation facility, marijuana product manufacturing facility, marijuana testing facility, and retail marijuana store, but none of those are listed in this land use allowed table. Only just the definitions of just the definitions, but they're not listed alongside like manufacturing noxious or heavy. So no. I, are you saying that these these two, marijuana and marijuana establishment, fall under one of these manufacturings we light and heavy? We don't have them in our land use table. Are they one. supposed to be in there? Um, our, our code specifically states that they have to be at least 500 feet from certain areas and by so, state law right by state law but we have not they never were added to your land use table giving them a actual yes it's allowed because the state I mean, has so this, many requirements right and and if you i mean right now we have one marijuana establishment in cb they meet the requirements of being more than 500 feet away from the church that's near it but um it doesn't it doesn't make it easy for you as well as us to incorporate that as a land use table because you know unless we i mean we never really believed that marijuana establishments would be allowed anywhere in commercial business district because of the the length the distance requirement but it was allowed because it was over 500 feet but everywhere else, there's a church or a school, except for in the industrial areas. So, okay. So. So what's happening is downtown in your central business district, um, there has been a, a request and a concern that um, the candy place is considered heavy manufacturing. The brew house is considered heavy manufacturing. When you say that is considered by whom? Well, that was the question. The I mean, they're wanting to know how they can operate when they're considered heavy manufacturing. We don't know based off of, you know, my mm -hmm. understanding is based off the chemicals that are involved, but 
when you come down to extraction of marijuana, <coughs> you've got butane involved a large point, portion of the time, which then requires it as a heavy manufacturing. And it, it just gets you in a really sticky subject on how you want to address it. Do you want to address it under your land use tables? Do you want to add it and then allow it by conditional use? Do you want to leave it as definitions that you have and not include it in your land use table? Because that's the question we're getting. We're getting somebody that wants to do extraction and wants to do these things, and they're saying, well, right across the street, there's there's a candy shop. That's manufacturing. There's a, a brew house down the street. That's considered manufacturing. But it's not how it has been inspected by, like, the fire department. It's a different type of manufacturing, if so even. So this first definition, 52, manufacturing heavy, mm -hmm. it has very, it has a lot of ores. I mean, it's got, if you fit in one, two, three, four of those segments, You're you considered, considered heavy. Mm -hmm. And so a use engaged in the basic processing and manufacturing of materials or products predominantly from extracted or raw materials. So... It might be easier to look at the other way. Look at what light is. Mm -hmm. And a if it doesn't fit into light, then it's heavy. Right. So, as gauge management from previously prepared and finished products or parts, including process fabrication, some of the drink. Mm -hmm. So then, sales just. What are we missing here, Jackie? Because you're. So, light and heavy are both allowed in central business. Heavy manufacturing is not. Heavy manufacturing is oh, okay. only allowed in industrial area. Okay. And um, currently we have a business that is in the central business district that's allowed to be there to operate his business but wants to expand his business into the extraction area. And that expansion... That's flammable leads, or explosive material. Leads him more towards heavy, which is not allowed, and they're asking for it to be reviewed and changed to at least a conditional use permit in a central business district. Would, but would we grandfather in the other ones that are extracting from raw materials then? I don't think they were heavy. I don't. They, they were light manufacturing. They weren't yeah, heavy. They're not, not the definition. Yeah, I don't no, no, it's yeah. ore. Or, yeah, the first I, sentence, manufacturing materials or products predominantly from extracted or raw, raw materials. They're, they're manufacturing a product from raw materials. Right, but flammable or no, but materials. that's or. That's mm -hmm. or. That's or. So if it falls into any one of those four, it's mm -hmm. considered heavy. And that's their, what so their that's argument what is, argument that the brewery is, is manufacturing extracting something from a raw material and that the so taffy would be as well. who would a bakery would be as well a bakery would a bakery be. Mm -hmm. cuz this is so, so do we want to do we want to change our definition separate these things out or do you want to add it under the land use table as a conditional use permit giving you the ability to look at it as a case by case basis carol wants yeah. to say something carol mm -hmm. I think a critical difference between heavy and light is the, the use of flammable or explosive materials, hazardous or commonly recognized offensive conditions. Right. And that well, first sentence, manufacturing heavy, is, is kind of similar to both of them. So right. you could redo your definition to delete that first sentence or... Um, Make, make it very clear that heavy manufacturing involves using flammable or explosive materials and manufacturing processes that potentially involve answers. So instead of ors, say ands. Yes, because otherwise... I like that. Yeah, and then heavy must be separated from where people live and work and recreate, but that in industrial and this light manufacturing could be, you know, brought forward as a conditional to make sure that it's compatible with the zone that they want to do that. Right. I mean, that goes back to what I said is what, you know, what is heavy? It's what's not light. Mm -hmm. right. 
Right. So, but, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, you can look at the definition, but it's very clearly you have light. If it doesn't fit, if it's manufacturing, it doesn't fit into light, then it becomes heavy. Correct. Except for the first sentence in heavy, I which stands means. alone. I mean, the, the, everything after that is an or. Yeah, I think Lynn. that. Lynn. Oh, sorry. Verse, Craig's oh, first. Sorry. Sorry, go, go ahead. Oh, Lynn. Well, I looked at the definition of raw material, and it isn't flour, and it isn't sugar. Right. It's, it's extracting from the grass, and it's extraction of raw materials for the production of goods and services. Right. Especially from the natural environment, harvesting, mining, right. Covering. So, like beer, you're not extracting it because it's already been extracted yeah. and brought. Farmed out of its process. Right. And it's already been refined once. It's already been refined once. You know, Correct. flour and sugar and, and all that stuff is, is, is. It's not a raw material it's, it's anymore. It's not at the raw material it's stage. True. The raw material is your ore and your sugar cane. And okay. Yeah, and your wheat. Is, is marijuana considered a raw material? Well, I mean, then there goes the next thing because marijuana has already been, yeah. it's already been harvested. So does does the marijuana itself, you know, it's it's not. It's the, the same, same as the hops. Well, I would say no, but it wasn't the issue that they were going to use a lot of butane or propane. Well, to it, you know, the the process, you know, the different equipment that was given to us, like to review, a lot of it required butane. And then they started talking about uh, one that was CO2. Mm -hmm. And then the, you know, the, the standards with the fire department was that it has to, and the state, is that it has to have its own room that's a fire safe room, has its own exhaust system, has its own all of that. Mm -hmm. And so that's when it came back to us saying this is more of a heavy use than it is a light use. Yeah, but but you know, it totally... Butane and propane are not that different. But isn't that one yeah. of the kitchens used to cook food? I mean, right. Propane. Oh, propane. Yeah. So, so, you know, because it's butane doesn't really... I mean, in fact, I, I think they could... Anything they're using butane, they could probably use propane. It's well, a, and the state code with for marijuana extraction specifically states that it is considered heavy manufacturing. It says that in the state right. code. Um, and so then, the, you know, then it's just where you want to allow it. Do you just want it to be an industrial or do you want it to be in the land use as heavy manufacturing allowed by conditional use in a central business district, an auto commercial business district? Like, that's that's the question. And How do you want it to be in the land use table? There's that all of the all of the marijuana establishments come before the borough planning commission, and we recommend if they meet the code that they go forward to the assembly for approval. And the one we had at our last meeting had a packet of about 45 pages of tons of different things they were going to manufacture. So there's tons of different ways right. that you can manufacture a product from that. And so, in, um, you know, they're, they're in, on the Kenai Spur Highway in, uh, in Kenai. Um, I don't know if you contacted any of the other cities to determine where they're yeah, allowing we, them. We, we talked about it, and, I mean, even our fire chief as well as our building inspector has reached out to other communities within Alaska because, you know, it is a concern. And to be blatantly honest, it is such a concern that we were told by two communities, don't allow it in any district but industrial because the smells, the, the issues with what it's doing to the properties around it and that. So, you know, it's just, again, I, I couldn't say you know, in my heart of hearts, I'd say we should, you know, do it by case by case basis. I, you know, in my mind, I, I look at it as if you did it by conditional use, then everyone around you is going to know that that's what's happening and it was going to happen. And either can voice their opinion in an open forum to you versus us just saying, yep, it's allowed, and then finding out down the road that it was detrimental to three businesses or four businesses or the lifestyle that people want in their area. 
I, I think that if you were to approve it, I would say by conditional use. That gives you the ability. Well, yeah. I, I don't think we should put heavy manufacturing under any conditional use. Heavy manufacturing is going industrial and end of story. If you know, if you want to look at it as like a raw product, you can. They can. Sounds like they can still get in there. Like uh, barley is right. not a raw product. Marijuana is not a raw product. It's already been worked. And if they can do a CO two, they can still get in there. But allowing conditional use for heavy industry in certain areas opens it up to all, all kinds, kinds of things. And we've see, seen things come through where a lot of people didn't want it and it still goes in. And so, so by you, that... Well, you're saying we're just going to fall back on the state's definition. Yeah, I like... And, and then we just, we use that as, you know, yeah. is that what it, it needs to be changed from there. They're extracting because marijuana extraction, I mean, marijuana candies or beer, yeah, but the state's saying this one's a heavy... And they're not saying the other one's a heavy. So, so we're going to fall back on the state's definition that it's a heavy because it's a well, recognized offensive. I would like to fall back on our, this right. right here. I'm not sure how we would get around because I wouldn't, as long as it's not using flammable liquids, I wouldn't consider it heavy. So I don't know how you would get around the state's issue on the, that. The or, state literally says extraction. But, I mean, it does. The code for the state says extraction in the marijuana process is industrial or heavy manufacturing. Well, um, I'll let me pull it up really quick and I'll tell you the exact. I just don't want to open heavy industry, industrial to uh, conditional use permit. I want it to be in industrial where it needs to be. In allowed out, right? In industrial, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But not in central, central business. No. 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 Yeah, we so just no put no the O under. Industrial. Yeah, it just goes under industrial where it for, should be, and you just do your Right now, care. heavy is allowed. Right now, heavy is not allowed. It has a CUP in industrial. Well, I keep I mean, that CUP. Lynn. Well, it doesn't hurt. I mean, that just means you get to, you get to make sure other things well, are done. I guess done. Well, Lynn's talking, guys. Okay. Sorry. I ended up being in an Anchorage assembly meeting, and um, I can't remember why. But they were talking No, it's it states that in state law, but yeah. what the problem is is people come to the meeting and say they don't want to smell that. Well, in the plan, they have to show how they're going to keep the smell from going outside. And if people don't call and complain, they can't be fined or shut down or anything. So that's, again, I, Carol's brought up how we need to monitor our conditional use permits. So that would have to be something... I mean, we don't have somebody that monitors conditional use permits really um, like, like a code compliance officer, but the per people that live alongside of these facilities have to call and complain. They have to call the city, the borough, the state to complain. In the industrial, only. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what it already is. Yeah, yeah. that's what it is. Right. So there's no change. Yet. For that. And I'd like to see this definition modified. To be ands instead of ors. Yeah. Yeah. It, it needs work. It needs. Did we pull yeah. this directly from the states, or where did we get this definition? You, when in the beginning of the marijuana issues, a lot of these are merged from other cities, but we do reference the state statute quite often. Okay. But it's not for word for word. And that's where, like, for us, we had an issue because we're like, well, <laughs> you know, you, we agree. You see it one way and we see it another. And trying to incorporate it, you know, we just went with state statutes. We wouldn't, wouldn't have that, the worry. Um, I'm still trying to find your... Definition for uh, us. Yeah, like these definitions are 15.10, 14 out of the code. Right, yeah. Yeah. We've but, got that yeah. sheet. Yeah. I just wanted to know if we were, if it was the, same the state. With the state. Yeah. Oh. 
Yeah, is that the same as the same? I, the, the last or commonly recognized offensive conditions? I, that's what I was... I think that that's the one that you have to have somebody file a complaint. There's been loud music and my, the lights are shining into my living room window and there's no, the smell of marijuana. That's all part of what the state requires that they have to have security. They have to have certain, certain ones of them have to have fencing. They have to have an ingress and an egress marked in, in a well, that's, parking lot. Yeah. That's the marijuana so, thing, but not heavy. I mean, not we're not manufacturing. manufacturing heavy. Well, there's mm -hmm. the smell and the right. security so, and all that. Marijuana product manufacturing facility. Right. Yep. Which is the manufacturing for preparation or packaging of marijuana products to sell. That's the first definition. And then And there, then there's the retail. I think there's only two different. Either your manufacturing facility or your retail store. Those are the only two that yeah, come before the borough. Yeah, I got to go through the 120-page document. <laughs> no, what I was just talking about is that heavy, under manufacturing heavy, mm -hmm. if you have a process that is considered obnoxious, or offensive, then that would fit under heavy, which could include smells. I mean, it's just, it says recognize offensive condition. It's so, tough when you say consider, though. You know, that's, that's a weak spot in here, commonly recognized offensive conditions. Well, what's commonly recognized? Well, right now, the state says... Smell, noise, light, yeah. well, right, but at what But at yeah, what smell. level... Is it commonly recognized as offensive? The level that we decide, because it's subjective. <laughs> yeah. it's a subjective level. And then when you get to that, well, that's where you get. They, they can't get a permit to do this except through the state, and the state is going to require a whole bunch of conditions. Mm -hmm. Right. And then it goes. So it, I mean, it's not that we can't require the same thing. It's just that the state state also over has a large oversight. I'm kind of with Nathaniel. It's, I think we should not allow heavy manufacturing in central business district, yeah. even with the CUP. Because, you know, if they check all the boxes, then the CUP is basically, right. I mean, they no. already got it. I mean, already proven right. that before. And, and I yeah. and agree with you completely on that. I'm just mm -hmm. saying is, how do you say, and this is where my discussion is going, it's how do you say the candy shop you know, if this person over here says, hey, I'm doing, man, you know, uh, marijuana, and, um, but you're letting the candy shop do it. And what's mm -hmm. the difference between what I'm doing and what they're doing? Because the state says that marijuana extraction is a heavy Right, and that's what I said. We're just falling back on the state. Yes. Yeah. Like just the and leaving it that. It says if you want right. to do this here, you have to change the state's right. verbiage. Right. Yeah. Go take that fight. Mm -hmm. Then bring it back to us. That's all I was saying. So, this whole so in our definition, we could say something to the effect of, or as defined by state or federal Statute. guidelines. Mm -hmm. Do we say that? Yeah. The, I mean, we already say that, right? As an over. As a term for defined. Yeah, but code. yeah, we we do recognize. I mean, we can't at operate. At the beginning of our code, we do recognize the state. Statue. Yeah, but we have. I'm sorry. What? Term as defined in state statutes and any amendments there too. So you could include that in your And then Alaska statutes 1738. Yeah, 900. It's in there twice in our code. So is that what you're reviewing? Okay. Um. Yeah. Well, we're, this this is the discussion we're having, and. Then when it comes to our ch changing this, that's where we want to either follow exactly what we have and um, probably be ready for uh, supporting your decisions on what is light or heavy so, uh, and, and, and have the state 
terminology for what's light yeah. and heavy. And, and the code yeah. had, the state code also has the local options referenced, so we can we can reference those. Those things we did not reference were. Um, we have a marijuana establishment here. They have a retail store, marijuana cultivation facility. The definition is a little different, so we could we could just basically limit it to what the code, you know, what the state what says. The, yeah. The, yeah, local options. If the local department development, uh, I like state definitions. Mm -hmm. yeah, my question is, is if we have um, our own definition, but they still have to pass the state muster, so to speak, to get their licensing, we're leaving the door open for them a little bit, um, you know, uh, actually, you know, saying, well, we need city co city stat city definitions, but not the state, sort of, you know, makes it a little bit problematic. We should be consistent. That well, is what I'm saying. when we get an application, we should have an approved state uh, per application. When it comes to the borough, we get the state's uh, application and their sign off that they've met everything okay. Okay. before it comes to the borough. But we and then it goes to the assembly. Here, it's not something that we should probably require, but mm -hmm. what we get is, hey, we want to do this, and then that's yeah. <laughs> so we're not only looking at our code, we're looking at, okay, and then when we say, well, the state says this, that's why we are where we are today because, mm. you know, the state mm. says that is considered heavy manufacturing mm. and this individual does not believe that the city should require that same statute because it's, it's new and it's approved and we should be allowed to do it in any district. And so that's... That's where we come along and say, hey, well, we can bring it to the commission, but this is, you know, the research that we've done. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fall back on your favorite line, change the code. So to change the state. Take it up with the state. Mm -hmm. take, take it up with the state. It's all new and improved. It's not written in. Yeah, it's, it's not, not written in New code. and rule, you know, go to the state and have yeah, it changed. Because, so this, 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 we already have a retail marijuana store 55D in the retail marijuana store is allowed outright in office residential, auto commercial, harbor commercial, or central business district. Yeah. So that they are allowed down downtown, right. and that's where our only one is, right? Yes. yes. So, but none of these others are in our town yet. The cultivation, the limited cultivation, the manufacturing yeah, facility, and the testing that. facility. And I, I think. I don't know of any, most of those I think are outside cities, I mean like the last they're, one they're we had, it, yeah. which had, yeah. I swear, 30 different types of product they were manufacturing was in Nikiski, which is, an, uh, which is a borough, so. So, are we done with it? Well, I think, I think we've opened up our eyes to what mm -hmm. the issues are right. and that when we come to this um, action in our meeting that we will be prepared for what um, the wishes of the commission are. So, well, well, why is it coming up on our meeting? We're not changing anything. Well, when we go back to in, and have action, this... Th then we'll approve. Oh, or, yeah, yeah we you're have, way down the line. Way, yeah, we're yeah, down the we line. Do but we, yeah. this was the review right. and the requests by members of the public to specific issues that they right. were interested in sure. expanding. Could I recommend that when we bring it back that we also maybe update how that application is done? Like, because you just said when it comes to the borough, you have all of that. It, when it comes to us, we don't get any of that. So it would have been a lot easier if, the, if we had, hey, we just applied for a cultivation facility license through the state. Mm -hmm. That I could have went, oh, that's not allowed in a central business district. Yeah, we, we have the whole, uh, I mean, if you go to last week's Keenan Peninsula Borough, Planning and Zoning Commission, you'll see the packet that we got for that, and that's 
what yeah. you get. If, if we say yay or nay. that in our code, it would help community mm -hmm. development as well as I think the business owner because right now what's happening is they're saying, you know, yeah. well, I'm, I'm operating this marijuana establishment, but now I want to do this. If they said, now I want to do this, and I was able to say, well, did you get approved by the state to do that? Right. It would be a lot simpler for all of us if we just incorporated that type of wording. Well, if, if that, but we still need to say where it's allowed in our city because if we say once the state approves you, it's you know open field. It's not. It's where where would then then if that's allowed, you've met all the state requirements. We know it's got all these safety parameters around it, and now we can say where we want to see it in our town. Um, Brian Taylor is who handles the marijuana uh, applications at the borough. Ah, it's 810. Um, so that is the beginning, and we have an outline of how we're going to continue the land use allowed table and the sections of the code um, for the definitions of those items. And look forward to seeing the letter that's going to go out to the first district will specifically invite to a public meeting that is open to anyone and go through there yes carol i'd like to say i spent several hours this afternoon going through the uh, packet on the land use table good and can i share my comments with you tonight or was my effort wasted it's not wasted. Um, we will be going through the land use allowed table over the next several months. Um, so I don't think my comments actually would fit in with that format. So I, I guess I can email it to you and just think about it individually, but I am really disappointed that, <clears throat> that I waste all that time. Yeah, I'm it's not wasted time, Carol. If we're going to get your input, um, we will take your input. I'll let the commission decide. Do we want to stay longer and go through Carol's uh, recommendations on the land use allowed table? Well, I guess I just like I'd like to understand why you think that if we're having a we're going to have multiple discussions with different pertaining to different sections of town, right. so that we can gather information of what. I don't People think want. that my comments um, would fit in that format. And so what type of comments are you... Well, um, I'll pick one yeah. that I think is really important. Um, on page 67, the resource management zone is intended to manage resources and... Give, us a, give me a title because my pages yeah, don't line it. up. Yeah, we're I'm in the you're, you're, t you're the resource management definition of what resource management is? Is that what you're... <coughs> it's in, well, this is what it says. It's intended to manage resources and prevent development in floodplains and unstable zones. So Wh which what section has a packet? Yeah. Girl, the July well, it's on page 67 of this evening's packet. Um, I, I have resource management defined as partially developed land subject to floodplains and steep slopes. So it's intended to manage resources and prevent development in flood plains and unstable uh, so Can you bring that up on the... Uh, it's in page 88 of the July 6th. Page 88 of the July 6th. Oh, there we go. Oh, we yeah, that's what I just read, but that's not what Carol read. We just she was going to go through all these. Things. We incorporated what we had in the last packet. So you say it's on what page of the July 6th packet? 88. 88. It's on where the, the grids are. The 88. 88. At the bottom of 88. Yeah, no, that's what I just read, but that's not what she read. I was referring to tonight's packet. But it's the same thing. I don't know. We didn't change anything on this. So this here, says resource management is partially developed land subject to floodplains and steep slopes. Right. You read what a whole bunch wanting? more. Right. What else so, did you? <clears throat> so my comment about what it is intended for, be careful with uses, especially of allowing permanent and expensive infrastructure 
permanent living quarters for animals or people could be endangered, emergency services and utility public works which could be devastated, such as the animal shelter, airport, prison, all dwellings, emergency services, home occupation, as no home should be allowed, restaurants, seafood processing, and veterinary hospital. Those are all uses that are currently allowed in the resource management. Zone. Okay, that would have been a good sentence to start with. Then we could have looked at the what's. They're allowed by conditional use permit, most of them, right? So when you think of Haynes being wiped out and Juneau being wiped out, these are unstable slopes in floodplains. And so the, the uses that allow permanent and expensive infrastructure, places where people live, places where people eat, those are all under conditional use permits. Those are all, I know, but I'm saying they should not be allowed in that zone. Great. Madam Chair, yeah. the definition of resource management, yes, we have that one, right. but in the general code, right. resource managements are lands which are generally undeveloped and cannot be precisely zoned to an inadequate information on the extension of public services and utilities. The sustainability of the land to support commercial, residential, industrial, and public uses or other possible environmental consideration. That, that is the definition that we go by and that would be why your land use table has those things. Right. Because right. we were just talking about out there on the... On the Bench. Well, we were also talking about on, on uh, Dickcraft Road. On Dick oh, right. Road. The road on that side, it's just never been defined. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it, it should be, and now we've got and, enough and can, information now that we said we should look at it to try and define what that is. And you can is. define mm -hmm. it as your conservation okay. overlay or mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. type of zone. Right. So the real issue here was not actually what's in the land use. It's, it's the limited definition that's been written up. Okay. On that, this sheet. That wasn't part of that um, packet, of this packet, that definition. Okay. <clears throat> but I was really alarmed to see how many things were being allowed in a place that had floodplains and unstable okay. slopes. Okay. Well, so we're. Maybe that could be separated okay. And, well, and I do think that your comments um, and stuff will have a definite place to come up, but I think we're. I think because we've talked about this for almost two years now, to try and get specific information from residents of specific areas of town and encourage them right. because we feel like we really need to get more of that information so that we can do better judgments. Right. And then when we incorporate it all, will be the time for will be the time for this. Yeah. And, you know. And Carol, you're more than welcome if you'd like to send us your recommendations and mm -hmm. we can incorporate them when we start working on those districts. Like, you know, we'll make sure that you know about them, of course, because they'll be public. But um, if you incorporated them, then that gives us the ability to put that area, put that incorporation in right. when it gets brought forward. The more public comments right. we get, the better able we are to make the decisions. Right. And it's much better getting these things early instead of like this last yeah. Well, I waited for you guys to come out with it and I see things that I'm still concerned about. Okay. There's under well, E um, the okay. 150 it, consecutive days that doesn't, you know, there's just stuff that doesn't, that's like an overall thing that doesn't right. make sense to me Right. that I think won't be addressed by these no they won't they won't be but we got to bring it all together that's just that, got, that's just that's a, another true. year maybe longer of just gathering information right right I mean, we're just gathering information now we want to try and gather it from people that we really well and our and our hope is you know what the title was i guess but well it's just well, the beginning it's a work a session and we said we'll be gathering over a year and a half so Okay. And also, as we do these districts, if a district is mostly resource management and, and um, industrial, then that would be a time to bring up definitions. Or there's and resource management right next to it. You know, yeah. it'll come up at each time. And I mean, just like that last CUP. I mean, one right. part was 
resource management, the other part was rural residential. So yeah, those are the times, but through Not, this yeah. process, I mean, we will be able to address your concerns, but I think that you are correct <coughs> in the fact that as a commission, you're reaching out to more individuals, giving them the ability to have a say in what's happening around them. Because right now, maybe they don't know and that, you know, I know that the last two years, we've I've had a, quite a few citizens come forward and say, I had no clue that this is what was allowed in my area. Right. And, and I think that that gives you the ability to say, okay, now we're going to break you into districts, and now is your time to come and voice it. So mm -hmm. the future land use changes, the, the comprehensive plan updates, all of that will be incorporated with the data that we receive over the next year. And it won't come back in a ordinance form or uh, until no. we've had all those meetings, yep. and then you'll have plenty of opportunity to review the draft and and give more input at that time, but please come to as many of the district meetings as possible um, and and share your input. And I'm hoping we, we have a way to take the consensus of each of those work sessions, kind of like a town hall meeting with mm -hmm. maybe we have the eight different areas and you know, if you like, if you like that thing in that area, put a sticky on it, and wherever the most our, stickies our, are, whatever. whatever I you know. Wait for that one. This to be the <laughs> our, our goal is to also incorporate at some point a, a survey, just like we've done. You know, we're starting to incorporate more of them. I mean, mm -hmm. I know you haven't seen them, but the city is starting to really use that because it is a way for us to reach out to citizens that may not be able to attend the meeting, mm -hmm. and then we take those descriptions. We categorize them, put them together, give you the data that helps also. I mean, somebody that's not in District 1, you know, is making decisions that may live in District 8, and right. may, that may be the only person that's making those, but giving them the ability to answer some survey questions and those type of things gives you that, that data that we so badly need. Yeah. All right. Um... So we will see the municipal land inventory and plan at our September meeting where we will pass a resolution uh, approving it and forwarding it on to council for their two um, meetings before it's enacted in and Cheryl, if you can make sure to send me that permit and, information. I'll get, I will get those things updated. And then, um, next our next meeting is uh, August, August 3rd. 3rd. And we do not have a joint work session before that. No. We just have our regular meeting at 7 p.m. Okay. And then August 11th is the joint work session with PACAB. Flood board. It will be in the community room. We will have it on YouTube. It will be discussing the right of way and the airport. The right of way and the, the right airport. Right of way with the airport. Okay. That it's so contentious right now. We're going right to discuss all of it. <laughs> it the, the title is off of your recommendation to include PACAB. So PACAB will be there, the flood board will be there, they'll give us a project update of what they know they're doing on their end, what the right of way was actually for, for the city, and the overall scope of okay. that residence. And that's at the library. It will be at the community room, yeah, we don't have enough space in here for all, even the commissions. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Wow. Well, Sounds good. exciting night. It will be. All right, it will be. It will be. Okay. So, oh, tonight, yeah. All right. Um, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Lynn. Thank you. Thank you.